What about Elon Musk and pump and dump with Dogecoin? What the <laughs> hell is he doing? It's not Ankur Varikoo's fault. It's not Akshat Srivastava's so fault. A person simply just kills himself. Ankur Varikoo shouldn't go to jail. जब से mining शुरू हुई है, graphic card बहुत महंगे हो गए हैं. Why do we have to trust an authority to value or devalue the notes that I hold in my wallet? The Papa के छः परसेंट FD के return से bore होके बेटा लगाता है क्रिप्टो करेंसी में पैसे और पाता है सौ परसेंट रिटर्न एक दिन में दूसरे दिन क्या होता है वो न्यूज़पेपर बता देता है कि सबसे बड़ा नुकसान हुआ हज़ारों लोगों के पैसे गए बट दैट्स द मिस इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट क्रिप्टो करेंसी इन जनरल एंड डू वी अंडरस्टैंड इट टू अर्टन एक्सटेंट नो टू अर्टन एक्सटेंट येस वॉट इज इट द फंडामेंटल्स वी हैव विद अस अ पैनल टूडे Comprising of Shivankar, we liked so much on the Pawn Podcast that we invited him today as a mic. As Shivankar, welcome to the show, Shivankar. Always a pleasure to give you company, Anshul. And then we have Namish Thangvi, who's the CEO of Coin Crunch, and he's big in the digital space right now. And we see a lot of interviews of uh, Namish on a lot of platforms. Uh, uh, welcome to the show, Namish. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. Thank you. And finally, we have Anush Basin, who's a CA by education and has been practicing uh, as a tax consultant for cryptocurrency and investors and uh, other people who are stakeholders in this area. Yeah, that's right. Thanks for having me, Anshu. Oh, welcome Thank to you. the show, Anush. So, India's stand on taxation of cryptocurrency. Like first they ban it, then the Supreme Court says no, no, the ban won't work. Then Nirmala Nirmala Sitaraman, the finance minister, comes up with. a uh, statement that 30% tax what is this 30% tax about and how far how good it it is anush throw some light in here in the tax area yeah sure so i think let's rewind a little bit talk about what happened at the supreme court the rbi was never comfortable uh, letting letting this industry exist right so the rbi came in and said banks will not provide access now the supreme court said this is a constitutional violation every person should be allowed to trade in whichever business they deem fit and they removed the the restriction since then the industry has been growing uh, i mean multi multifold um you you've seen so many exchanges come out raise so much funding the volumes the number of user sign ups everything started going through the roof this is when the finance ministry also started becoming a little concerned about the fact that there is so much money that is flowing into crypto possibly flowing out of the country as well so why don't and we tax it and we don't know what to do with it so we don't know how to regulate it it's based on the internet we ca- we cannot ban the internet uh, there were rumors about a ban bill coming in 2019 but the government very easily figured out that the ban won't work right it's the same way pawn was banned you can use a vpn to watch pawn you can use a vpn to access crypto as well so the government is still trying to figure out what they want to do there have been multiple sessions the monsoon session summer session of 2019 2021 where we were always expecting something to come out nothing came out i don't i don't think the government still has figured out a, a regulatory framework the taxation is a stop gap measure it's a way to say we know what you're doing we are watching you we are also going to tax you we are going to make it difficult for you to buy and sell and probably that is a decent incentive for you to get into this space while we figure out everything else let's tax it at 30% So, what does the thirty percent tax mean? Every time you sell crypto, you're going to be taxed at a flat thirty percent. There is no slab rate. You won't get the benefit of probably making say say a lakh or two lakh versus ten lakhs or 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 a hundred uh, hundred lakhs, one crore. You will get taxed at a flat thirty percent. They're also taking it. They're they're sort of comparing it with gambling, with uh, with income from race horses or or betting on race horses. And they're saying we think this is that sort of activity. We're going to tax it at that that rate. We're not going to allow you any losses. If you've made losses from crypto, it can't be set off. You just have to pay thirty percent on your profits. So, so uh, I'm sorry. So I just want to understand this better. When you say it's taxed, uh, who needs to pay the tax? For example, if I I'm an investor sitting here in India, and if I'm selling my uh, crypto asset to a person who's sitting outside India, so how is it different from selling it to someone who's in India versus selling it to someone outside India? And how do you tax the guy who's sitting outside India? How does Nirmala Sitaraman get to tax that guy? I'll I'll break it down. Um, it's always the Indian resident who will get taxed, and he will get taxed at the event of a sale or a liquidation. So there can be three uh, three types of liquidations. One, you've sold it for cash. cash or bank transfer one you sold it for another crypto so i had bitcoin and now i i converted to ethereum again that is another event and the third is i had bitcoin i found someone who was willing to sell me a watch for my bitcoin again i converted my bitcoin i 
I liquidated that profit. I realized that profit and uh, basically acquired that watch. So on all of these three events, as long as I am an Indian resident, I have to be paying 30% on whatever was the gain. Now, with regard to who's the counterparty of the trade, that that is a question of TDS. So the new law states that every time the seller is an Indian, the buyer has to deduct 1% of the sale price and mm. deposit it to the government. That's where the entire confusion is. So many people are trading on decentralized exchanges. So many people are trading peer to peer. So many people are trading on overseas exchanges. While I may be a resident Indian seller, the buyer may not be, uh, may not know my tax laws, may not be able to acquire my PAN card, may not be willing to comply with Indian tax laws. That's where the entire issue is that if both the Indian buyers and sellers are interacting, this law can be complied with. If the, the, the buyer or the counterparty of the trade is not in India, it's very difficult to import. I, I also want to add one small point here. It wasn't, and a lot of people interpreted this 30% tax as, okay, so now crypto is taxed, so it will be regulated or it is regulated. So the government clarified that this does not mean that we are making crypto a legal tender or a legal framework for it. It just means that it is it exists and we want tax from it. Ah, very it, similar to, bhai, uh, you are making money. So yeah. while you're at it, I'm going to take my cut. Is, that, also, is that not how the maf mafia operates? It's exactly... I, I'm not, <laughs> I was actually <laughs> drawing the same parallel. I think, I think a lot of people believe that, you know, taxation... A lot of people in the developed countries and, you know, all these cyberpunks, uh, cypherpunks, they believe that taxation is theft, right? It's a theft of your money. And a, a sort of socio-secular country like India, uh, a lot of money that we pay as taxes does not translate into benefits for us, right? So for us, it actually is a, a, a real loss of money, yes. right? We, we should be proud that we are helping the country take care of the below poverty line population, you know, the roads and everything. But at the end of the day, it's not translating to the same benefits that if we were paying the same amount of tax in a developed country, it would translate to, right? The other thing that I, I also want to mention that it also, the 30% tax now doesn't mean that, you know, before it became applicable, all the crypto income was tax free, right? That's where Anush comes in. Uh, so, the taxation was always there. It's just that people like Anush were helping others figure out what bracket it goes into. So, and now yeah, it's sort of... Yeah. So uh, that is one part like ta uh, taxation in case of selling a cryptocurrency and exchanging it or maybe buying anything out of it. What about the people who are getting their currencies in cryptocurrency or who are mining it? Like, do they have to pay the same thing? Hmm. That's, that's a great question. I think the government has... He's created this law in, in light of investors. They haven't really taken into account people who are getting paid in crypto. They haven't taken in, into account people who are mining cryptocurrencies. Now, for example, if I'm running a mining rig, I am incurring huge infrastructural costs to run that rig, electricity, uh, cooling, uh, manpower. Uh, there's also probably depreciation, amortization of, of all of the equipment that I have. But the government has said now in this law, the only cost that you can deduct when you're, when you're, uh, computing your profit is the cost of acquisition as a miner I, I don't know my cost of acquisition right I didn't really pay cash to acquire that Bitcoin I paid in electricity I paid in staff costs I paid in um, I, I paid rent for for my land I paid so many different things but the government has said if you haven't paid in in in, in say INR or through your bank to acquire this you will not be allowed to deduct any other expense safe to say that Nirmala Sitharaman doesn't understand the concept itself I think they understand it very well. I would beg to differ. I think they've put in the mind. Uh, I would say the same thing if it was 2018, where, uh, where the government or the RBI had not essentially understood cryptocurrencies to the vast, you know, uh, opportunities that are in there. I think now they, they understand, understand it very clearly. And hence, uh, they have, uh, you know, brought in a tax that discourages daily traders who lose the most money also, right, in times. So this is to discourage uh, heavy activities with cryptocurrencies. You want to be an investor, cool, buy, keep it, you are safe, you are good, you know, you're not affected. This affects all the people who were doing trades on a short-term basis, on a daily basis. They were doing arbitrage trades, right, buying here, selling there. 
so those people's businesses with the tds and this 30% tax is essentially shut down you say they understand it really well but at the same point of time what i see is ki they have taxed it and you as a crypto you are, you as a personality from the crypto sphere you are paying a 30% ta- uh, capital gains tax on every profit you make on every trade but what are you getting in return absolutely nothing there is no regulatory and the government is definitely not making a policy on checking whether a white paper is genuine or is it just some fraud coming out of some person who's created te- think, technologically yeah i think the no government in the world currently is yeah. evaluating white papers uh, i believe us did that with uh, bitfinex and that's why the entire probe came and bitconnect also uh, came to light with uh, similar investigations so, so the us the yeah. sec is very litigious they are looking at at, at tokens uh, in 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 light of securities they are saying that if you are selling unlicensed or unregulated securities to to us investors you are committing securities fraud that's what they're looking at it at but they're still not evaluating white papers and they're saying that this is this is okay to be uh, sold or this is not okay guys i'm sorry i am an absolute newbie here <laughs> these terms that you refer to are just alien concepts so will someone please <laughs> explain me like i'm five what is a token what is a cryptocurrency and what is a security i need to know so yeah okay maybe i can take yeah. it take a shot at this yeah so um let's say that i give you a 100 rupee note right it's a cash transaction it's the most private transaction ever i give you in secret these guys here will not know the government will not know that i give so you 100 rupees so you're basically rupees. like just passing a 100 rupee note yeah. to me like we're sitting and right? no one can see and now see this is the thing right in india we will look at it this way but if you go to a regulated market a developed country like let's say uae or us where cash transactions are not restricted india is india has capital restrictions cash restrictions all of those restrictions right that's why you straight up went like a okay, khopcha mein aake diya type no i mean we right. can do it so, on the table you yeah. said that i'm going to slide it and yeah. i said i'll so, take it back <laughs> exactly so the, so now the point is that that's the most private transactions that one has done right? so so this is a transaction between you and i in which we are exchanging money yeah but you see the way i view things uh, you only exchange money where there's a provision for a good or service so if you're giving me money i should be providing you with either more money i should be giving you this mug or yeah. i should be giving you a service my point being that in any in any transactional relationship okay the most private transaction is a transaction of cash okay yeah. right yeah. that cannot be traced back to you if you intend to you know be private about it so what what happens when you transact with a bank right you are depending on the bank to ensure that the transaction goes to the bank goes into my account checks if i have enough money then it deducts that much it gives you that much money it increases that balance right okay. so we are depending on the bank to ensure that the transaction goes through, goes through. okay i mean i trust my st- i am a patriotic at heart so <laughs> i i trust like as much problem that people may have against uh, you know the public sector banks i kind of like them no but it think feels about like it. home you know See, it feels the, like an the, extension but think of about home. it if public sector banks lose crores of rupees it's taxpayers money that the government is going to use to bail them out right so at the end of the day you will always be on the losing side because if they lose money it's still our money that is you know uh, filling up the hole or or i think rather than will. pointing out the flaws in uh, yeah, the, the present system no yeah, no no let us do a, let us do a quick recap of what are the fundamentals yeah, of crypto yeah so i was yeah, going into that right yeah. so, so this, like, this is a very this is a very important thing to yeah. understand the transactional nature yeah, of the transactional, transactional nature, nature. If, if i can just add yeah. one point just where nemesh ended the bank is basically making two ledger entries minus 100 nemesh yeah. plus 100 for you okay the problem is that for making this entry the bank will charge say x rupees now if they have to make another entry where it's four more zeros okay. they're going to take a significant more cut out of your pocket yeah. why it's, it's a same, service it's, fee it's it's the same amount of work it's what that uber doing. charges me it's, it's what spotify charges me it's what so that, premium charges so me. that's like no, uh, that, that, that's not that's, the point. that's the, not the, the point. point is that if if you were um, if if it's the same amount of work then why isn't there a fixed fee at the bank why am i paying if i'm transferring a million dollars uh-huh. i'm still paying 1% but it's just a few more zeros that the banker is putting in my books and in your books why are you paying so much more you see because the bank is also leveraging a risk it is also trying to do a counter party risk in the sense that you are asking him to transfer but the bank also needs to invest its resources not that really. couple of zeros you're saying those couple of zeros don't add anything to the bank's balance sheet it's not no, really. no. it's it's the amount of it's, so it's the there is there is literally no difference between transferring 10 rupees 
there is banker or fundamentally there is no difference for a bank, for a yes, bank. it's just ledger entries it's just entries you're saying that the bank is not supposed to have a statutory statutory really liquidity, liquidity, liquidity ratio where that, their cash reserves and no, gold reserves need to match the, up the, with the, their bank account the fee that That's the bank 6%. is charging the fee that the bank is charging for okay. my transaction processing mm-hmm. has nothing to do with the slr or the yeah. crr so you're saying that uh, a transaction may happen in absolute abstraction and a service fee is just a fraud which they are perpetuating over the years for the past 5 decades they, not they, a fraud but i mean, I mean someone would have caught on to it if no, this like, was a big fraud we have seen countries and their currencies go down like we, hogwash and me people South making america pay- is a good example i mean the argentinian crisis in the 1990s a lot of countries in africa devalued over yeah like devalued they didn't have the rbi you know and it's been it's been here for about 1934 so i think that they, they know a thing or two about managing currency See, like what do we believe. what do we understand about managing currency if what is the indian rupee backed by let's start with that right what do you Great. think is the indian rupee backed by i know earlier it should be the gold yeah. uh, that uh, the uh, value you should represent now it's probably a certain ratio of the gdp uh, if i'm not wrong i i like to believe That's it's gold uh, lots of it and foreign exchange so okay yeah. can you put a percentage to it percentage to oh to, well i am are you saying that uh, you believe that 100% of it is backed by either gold or forex or a combination not, not of all, that not all not yeah. all yeah because these past two years over the covid crisis they printed a lot of money uh, right. and that money went into the system yeah. right and that is why we are seeing the kind of inflationary pressures on 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 so many things uh, in terms of costing right so, so they definitely have leeway but that is kind of the government's job is to manage that right or the right. rbi's job is to manage how much money to print at what cost but no, there is a trust yeah. factor right but again I, I, we are digressing we need to get back on the point yeah so so these are whatever we're saying here no these points right i mean they're all conversational topics for sure but we are let's let's bring it to a point right yes. so understand this right your your bank is a central entity that that essentially controls the transactions that you do with it your government or rbi is the central entity that controls the uh, creation of money or hmm. the money that is influxed into the system right okay. and the money is not even backed by anything that's why we call it fiat currency fiat right? currency okay. so there is literally there's no gold let there is no yeah, requirement let me, let me of it you, yeah very quickly let me walk you through what backs if i take a 100 rupee note back to the rbi they're going to give me 95 rupees worth of dollars 4 rupees worth of gold 1 rupee worth of a big mixed basket of other foreign uh, foreign currencies uh-huh. okay. so 95 rupees worth of uh, inr is, is i i get dollars now i go to the fed reserve i say okay i have 95 rupees worth of dollars please tell me what is this backed by it's backed by thin air there is nothing that backs the fed reserve's uh, currency they, there is they, no gold in the system at all it's 4 rupees worth of gold approximately yeah. and the fed is also not doing this on gold no fed no. is absolutely above any okay, i got it. basically 1966 the gold the gold standard was repealed by nixon and since then it's only been a promise fiat actually means uh uh-huh. to to pay to the order of and we will repay at some stage i'd like to believe you and i assume that what you're saying is correct and uh, you know we are basically exchanging monopoly money promises yes right let's call it monopoly money now you still have to explain me like i'm five okay. what are the yeah. other now let's get there right yeah, so now, now you understand yeah. now you both understand that money as a system is 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 not the same way that we perceived it uh, before right it's controlled by the government it can be inflated by the government it can it the transfer of it is controlled by a centralized entity now let's say that we remove this inflationary aspect of money we bring in um, something that is a fixed uh, you know in quantity right so we remove the inflationary part of the currency system okay. what right? do you mean by that i'm sorry How, so let's say what is what is to mean to say that we because again my, i'm a student of economics yeah and from what my econ teacher taught me in class 6th and 7th was that inflation is actually very good for the economy kids from a macroeconomic perspective when things get more expensive there is more money which is going into the bgp so what is gdp it is totally the accumulation of the goods that you produce and the services that you offer and when the value of that goes up we all become if you rich. ask if you ask a crypto maximalist they'll tell you that these are numbers that are just there to tell a fake story right yeah i mean that's but what i'm not I going to, to i'm not going to say that i'm not going to say that i'm i'm sure he's not going to say that yeah i mean, I mean uh, adam smith wrote uh, the wealth of nations i suppose this is where he put forth this idea of macro right but see the thing is that obviously uh, you know inflation quantitative easing all of these are done to sort of control the economy but 
when done wrong you have a venezuela you have a zimbabwe you have an argentina you have an african nation which loses whose currency loses its value you have germany back But in when when it was I'd 1930s like to believe right then that is isn't that a case of just pure mismanagement of you know you had one job and you didn't do it so yeah but what if we remove that aspect of trust from the ecosystem itself why do we have to trust an authority to value or devalue the notes that i hold in my wallet the same reason we trust the government the same reason we why trust should our we? parents why okay, should we i mean uh, should i'm we? sorry if i'm putting this to you but why should we actually trust anyone to put a value on what my rupee is supposed to count or why not oh, wow. have it on a free market this I is mean, a revelation so you say if i shouldn't be trusting my bank no no it should yeah, be more a, about trusting a logic you say i should be trusting yeah. uh, in, a, in a sense there is now an alternative to trusting your bank you may want to park x percent of your funds in a in a technology based currency rather than parking 100% of your funds in in a bank and yes there have been issues right if a bank defaults if a if there is a run on a bank the how how will the bank get its funds back as namesh mentioned either the government is going to print more money the rbi is going to print more money or the rbi is going to use tax payers money to recapitalize that bank in both ways yes the bank is safe to the extent that um, the the bank got its money back but it's had a direct impact on me i had to pay to recapitalize the bank or there's more inflation I now i see you if there is an I alternative punjab and sindh bank is a prime example i think there was then a lot of uh, things that they found in yes bank very recently and yes bank had to be bailed out so let us talk more about this alternative technology yeah. currency yeah, so yeah let us have a few basics actually yeah, like what is yeah. blockchain okay, I, have a, so, i have a i have a list of questions sure. that i wrote down <laughs> from some research <laughs> you can can someone for the love of god please explain to me what is mining first of all i'm very curious to know what mining is all right what is tokenization okay right? that's another term that's been really eating me up uh and then you know uh blockchain but i want to understand blockchain from a proof of stakes and a proof of works okay so if uh, we can start off with that that would cool. be really helpful Let, i'll take 60 seconds to explain bitcoin and that sort of brings all these concepts into it as well Great. right okay so so i uh, i said that we need a currency that is a fixed amount right quantity is going to remain the same so it's not inflationary so bitcoin is fixed there is only going to be 21 million bitcoins ever right so that's the that's the deflation part now second thing is we need a currency that is that for which we don't have to trust the banks we don't have to trust a single authority so bitcoin is a technology backed cryptocurrency or software backed cryptocurrency that software is controlled by not one entity but thousands or millions of computers across the world right so what you are doing is you are you are taking a currency which is not controlled by any government not controlled by any company any centralized authority but controlled by millions of computers across the world and these computers take a decision on what needs to be done and what should not be done right so it's a collective democratic way of running money so i basically trust the banks and the government less and less and i trust millions of computers running this cryptic software yeah. thing because, which yeah. because i don't fully understand but which i am supposed to trust because code oh. is law you can see it If code you, because code is law right you can see it yeah right? and it doesn't change and, and computers are dumb machines if you tell a computer to to do a plus b it will continue to do a plus b without screwing up but okay yeah. up, that's helpful yeah. so i should trust the government less and the computer more there so, are millions of computers no because yeah. i agree with you yeah. and that's this is what is happening yeah i mean uh, i have started trusting baiju's more than my uh, school teacher i have started trusting netflix more than my cable television operator i have started trusting amazon more than my local kirana store i have started trusting big basket more than uh, you know upranis i think i think what you are referring to is not trust it's more of a relying on to the technology what we are talking about is why do you have to trust byju's to serve you better content tomorrow byju's could turn into a facebook and start manipulating your mind into you know uh, a specific way of thinking you don't want that but how do we know that won't happen with these computers okay i i'd like, like to step right in at this point of time and actually like maybe just let me step in with the blockchain if yeah. i'm not wrong, if i'm wrong please do correct me in the blockchain technology there's, there's a block right yes. a block has a finite number of entries that it can have yes. and then there's a unique id which is called the hash Yes. and then there is a previous id uh, which yeah. indicates from where does the data come from yeah so for every transaction there is a specific data point and there is an address through which i can trace it now every block is connected 
through a chain method with several other blocks. So, and all of these, all of these chains are called a collective ledger, which are now distributed throughout nodes on the internet, through all the computers that are mining. Right. If I'm not, if I'm can, wrong. Can I say this? Yes, please. I'll go back to your example of those ledger entries that banks do, right? If, if you and I have to interact, I send you 100 rupees, the bank will deduct 100 from me and the bank will add 100 to yours. Yeah. Now the same activity, instead of, of a centralized entity doing it, it's hundreds of thousands of computers all over the world. They do the same thing. They know my wallet address. They know your wallet address. They'll check if I have enough balance. They will deduct mine. They will add yours. Now in this system of adding and deducting balances, the unit of account is Bitcoin. This is what Bitcoin is. Great. Bitcoin is the unit of account of a transaction system, a transaction settlement system, uh, uh, which, which is completely run on code by hundreds of thousands of computers all over the world. And all of them carry the copy of the same ledger. So anybody can verify anywhere. It's a public ledger. When, when you spoke about blocks, it's actually all of these transactions with, which get stored in batches and then a block is formed. And then it's connected to the previous block through a, uh, through a method, method of hashing. Hashing essentially means they take all of the transactions through a hashing algorithm called SHA-256. SHA-256, I'm not yeah, wrong. Yeah. They, will, they will create a unique ID, which if any particular transaction or any data point within those transactions changes, the hash will change uh, substantially. So once the transaction has been hashed, that hash is post put into the new block. Now, if, if those transactions are ever manipulated later on, the hashes will not match. That is why they link the hash of one block to uh, the, the next block so that if ever anybody tries to manipulate old transactions, yeah. you can check the hashes and make sure if it's matching. I believe a not. chance that a computer at one, uh, at one attempt to crack a certain hash, the chances are 1 by 2 raised to the power 256. No, it's impossible. No, it's one by two raised to the power two fifty six. No, it's 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 here's here's why SHA fifty six is here's why hashing is impossible to crack. Okay, encryption is when you cover something up with code, but you have a key that allows you to change it. Hashing is if it's a two fifty six hash, it means that anything anything you enter, it converts into a two fifty six uh, bit string. So there are a certain amount of characters that go into it. So I write my name, it will still give me a 256 output. I write everybody else's name, it will still give me a 256. I write one crore or hundred crore people's name, it will still give me that same length of code. Okay, and then so it can never be converted back. You, Great. Theoretically, like quant computers can do something. Can do something because that's what I read that it's yeah. not like prop. It's not like foolproof. There is like this one supercomputer yeah. that can. That we might the take idea, one day. The idea is that it, in, in, in a technological term, we call it a brute force attack. Hmm. Okay. So what is a brute force attack? You continue to try one after the other, all options that are available to you. Why you can't crack a hash is because there are billions of billions of billions of options now. Right. So you need a very powerful computer to for all the options to be tried out. Right. So if you build a computer that's powerful enough to quickly try out all the options of, you know, all the keys to the lock, then you may be able to open it. Then right? you need 256 such computers to do it at once. Yeah, I mean, I mean okay, yeah. so, so just coming back onto the topic, uh, hashing is immutable. Yeah, to an extent, yeah. To a large extent, given yeah. the technological considerations we have today. Blockchain is a ledger of which everyone has a copy, at least whoever has blocked, uh, sorry, Bitcoin. Is, has a copy of a giant ledger and Even, we can all compare yeah, notes. Anybody can see it. Yeah. So basically, if there, if we all were to have bitcoins, we could basically just compare each other's notes to see, oh, who did you sell to, who did you sell to, and who did you sell to. Even if, if you don't have bitcoin, you can still you can see it. Or you can still do it. So it is basically uh, this worldwide ledger which everyone has a copy of. Uh, I still don't get where is the currency part of it, unfortunately. And what the hell is a Bitcoin backed by? I mean, I thought we started off with backing with gold and foreign currency. Yeah. So I want to know what a Bitcoin is backed by. So intrinsic value or something that is backed by something is um, a concept of, you know, whoever finds beauty in something, right? Like I could find, I could think that this mug to me is a thousand bucks. Uh, to you is probably a hundred rupees. Right. So for me, I am willing to pay a thousand rupees for it. Right. And Anush wants to probably pay two thousand for it. 
so it's about it's the concept the intrinsic value concept is where i find beauty now when you talk about what is bitcoin backed by you need to put in a significant amount of energy uh, resources machinery to mine or to create mine. new bitcoins so yes right? what is mining a bitcoin yeah. so now all of these things we talked about there is a there is a block there is a all sets of transactions that are there right they are put there are thousands of millions of computers running this algorithm but these are thousands of millions of computers are also spending a lot of resources they are paying for electricity they are paying for raw material they are paying for these computers right so how do they make money by running this Uh, entire bitcoin uh, you know algorithm and that's where mining comes in so there is a key part of the mining or 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 bitcoin network wherein every node that is trying to insert these transactions into the blockchain is also trying to solve a mathematical problem with it and whoever solves a mathematical problem they are rewarded by newly generated bitcoins Okay. To put it simply, I think it would be like they are trying to come up with a new hash that hasn't been created so far, and every time they create a new hash that has that is cross-checked by all the nodes over there, it gets rewarded by the system itself, which used to be fifty dollars for every new hash, but since more and more people are hashing, the number of hashes that can now be created goes down because of which the reward becomes lesser, and therefore every time you mine two hundred and ten two hundred and ten thousand blocks. the mining fees or the mining, the mining commission reward the reward is halved the mining reward halves so okay. that is so tentatively reform i mean I, if i have to draw a very rough parallel yeah if we are in a classroom right now and our math teacher comes along and we all get a question paper to solve right and it's this really integration ka formula wo usme upar differential bhi and then we she says whoever solves it the quickest <coughs> will get a little something from me exactly mm. so so okay uh, then we start solving it and it turns out Let me show. Friend here is the quickest at solving integral problems. Uh, after telling me that he doesn't know anything, so what happens now? In kind of this example, just to kind of simplify. So now you get that chocolate or that reward from the teacher. Okay. Right? So now you are the proud owner of a chocolate Bitcoin. Yeah. Okay. And then Bitcoin is fungible. When I say fungible, it means that it carries the same value anywhere you take it. Right? Okay. So a Bitcoin is a Bitcoin in any exchange, in any uh, you know place. But in any here's wallet, the thing, right? right? What is a wallet? Uh, now I want to know more about this wallet concept because I'm really confused about decentralized finance, about Binance, about. See, I'll also. So so let's just take forward this yeah. example because yeah. I think it's just okay. easier for the viewers. So, so now we solved a math equation. You got a chocolate. Yeah. It turns out you can't keep a chocolate in your pocket just like that. You need a special wallet to keep that chocolate. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Yes, that is right. Can I take that? Yes, please. Okay. So a, a a wallet is very simply the way you store your Bitcoin on on the ledger. So there are mul- multiple apps where you can go and create a wallet. Now that wallet is where is basically your identity on this uh, distributed ledger that we are talking about. So when we say that I transfer money to you. the wallet that i have is my identity if you have to send money to me i send you my public address which is similar to an email address or like a upi else. id can you call it a yes. upi yes. id UPI, is that similar yes. it's it's let's let's uh, think of it as an email and there is a password so there is a public key and there is a private key okay i need to have the private key to myself if i lose it or if i if somebody else gains access to it they can drain my wallet they can take the money away very similar to a upi password Yeah, yeah your yeah yeah if right, let's say for right. upi id if i am on yes. let's say uh, one of the big any platform. combination of a of a id and a password so yeah. my my upi id as at the rate that's my public face yes. and the private face is that four digit pin yes. which i yes. can put in that's and, my private key yes yeah. and very similar to that concept as long as somebody has my public id or my upi id or my public key they can send money to me Yeah, I I don't need to every time give them my wallet ID. I, if I've given it to you once, you can keep sending okay, money. Okay, so the so the chocolate comes, you put it in your wallet and you store it there. Yeah. In terms of if you want to give the chocolate to Anshul, yeah. he needs to have a wallet as well. Yes. Yes. Very easy But to set up. But you can't really do that that simply. You can't transfer your chocolate from you to him. Turns out there is something you require called as an exchange. What is an exchange then? Not really. You don't really. necessarily need an exchange. You can do a wallet to wallet transfer as well. But what the what is an exchange generally? An exchange is a platform where typically it's difficult. Uh, since two thousand and eleven, since Bitcoin came about, the adoption has been growing slowly, right? 
it was not very easy for me to find someone who was willing to take my Bitcoin and said, give me something else, whatever I wanted. So exchanges set up shop to ensure that there is a marketplace where buyers and sellers come and meet each other. If there isn't a buyer or a seller, there is someone called a market maker, which will be the counterparty to your trade. If you want to buy, they'll sell. If you want to sell, they'll buy. So an exchange is typically a very quick way of finding liquidity and s selling your Bitcoin or buying Bitcoin or converting it to any other crypto. And However, if I just want to send Bitcoin from my wallet to his wallet, we don't need an exchange. He just needs to have, have a wallet and I can send it to him. Okay, great. I think we've covered a couple of things. Uh, so I get my Bitcoin like now. Yeah, you get your chocolate, actually. <laughs> chocolate, yeah. <laughs> we are dealing with chocolates here because we do this section. It's explaining me like it's five, uh, like I'm five. I'm sorry. Because I'll have to also deduct TDS and I'm... <laughs> How we do it? We will take a bite of the chocolate. <laughs> yeah. I just... I, I, I want to, I want to uh, you know, the reason uh, people say, oh my God, it's been like 12 years. What is crypto doing? It's not that adoption. You know, you just guys are fooling each other. But the thing is that there are so many complications with this, right? Because... It takes a lot of people to be explained like they're five years old to understand this. And and the reaction that you gave me, right, is the reaction that you normally get from people. Hmm. The moment you say that your money, you know, you're not supposed to trust the people who are, you know, printing the money. They're like, we've been doing but then it for generations, right? Yeah. We are doing it for generations, right? So, yeah. no, no, you also, also, like, I'll be honest. I logged on to Facebook when I was a kid. They said, trust us with your personal things. I trusted them. Look how that turned out. Uh, I, I moved to Instagram. They said, trust us with your content. I trusted them. And then they have started kind of shooting reels my way, which make my th thumb go this and this. So what I'm trying to say is it becomes very difficult for to trust an entity on the internet who says, trust me with XYZ. And then because today you may trust them, but tomorrow you don't know how the trust is going to be exploited or used. Right. Which is why uh, we are sitting here in 2022 having this conversation about trusting this Code is law, computer-backed currency, yeah. uh, wallets, We're not exchange providers. But tomorrow, I don't know which which. No, but which if you really, if you really, if you really, really boil it down, right? And when we say code is law, it means that you don't have to trust. It means you have to verify. If you have the means to understand what the code says, then you can verify it yourself. You are only choosing to trust an exchange because you yourself do not want to put in that effort of I'm understanding sorry, that. I right? trust SEBI. I trust the BSC because I know there is a Securities Exchange Board of India. If the buyer does not give me my shares, I can make a private complaint and they will force them to either give disgorged profits, give me my monies or cancel the entry. So I have a regulator which is protecting our trade. My question to you is very simply this. In all of the things you just told me, who is regulating this? Okay, so now it brings us down to the first example that I gave you. I give you cash that's the most private transaction. The idea here is not to trust anyone not to have anybody overlooking your transactions. You are doing the most private transactions. So, so if you want to do something that protects your privacy, the regulator knows how much money you are spending on the shares, how much uh, profit you are making. Yeah, sure. Right. But it's not going to take it away. I mean, it's, I could be making thousands of crores. Why, I mean, why do you think? Okay, here's the thing. Why tomorrow if India and Pakistan breaks into war and the government decides that we are shutting down the exchanges, BSC, NSC, all of them, your money is stuck there. BSC and NSC is owned by the public, actually. They're all listed exchanges. I'm just saying that the government decides that there will be no trading. And they can enforce that because there is SEBI, who is a regulator. Yeah, SEBI can enforce see, that. Let's, right? let's take a simpler example. The Russia, exchange, Ukraine the, happened, I the believe. Exchange, all exchanges started at what? 3.30 p.m.? I think from what I remember, the last trade, I think there's a cutoff of 3 p.m. You're 3 right. 3 p.m. Okay. 3 p.m. is a cutoff if, for that day's if trade. I need I, to, if I need to urgently, there is a war has broken out. Okay. I need urgent liquidity. I need to sell my Reliance shares at 8 p.m. I can't do that. You will have to place an order which will be taken up when the market opens. And that I get the cash two days later because and there's the a T plus 2 settlement. And the right? settlement will happen two days later. Why? In, in, in crypto. I'm just drawing a par parallel, right? The market operates 24-7. There are no circuit breakers. The, uh, if, if the market starts falling, the market will find its own equilibrium wherever there is enough demand and supply. The markets in, uh, as, as you're talking about regulation, right? There is no, seven. I mean, it sounds to me like cryptocurrency is just like trading in shares. It is. If, if, if you want to make money, if you want to keep buying and selling, it is trading in shares. However, so there are multiple more use cases. Everyone here is an investor. There are multiple more use cases. So where, there are, see, we'll get to the, yeah. the yeah. use world yeah. cases. We'll get to the real yeah. world cases. But it sounds to me awfully like I'm trading in a couple of shares. And now this is a share market which is not limited to India. I can trade and exchange currencies uh, or stocks with people sitting in Russia and Ukraine and Canada. Uh, and I don't have a regulator. So that scares me a bit. Look, at the end of the day, 
you know the the idea is to have a free market right and we've forgotten the the fundamentals of any market is that it finds its equilibrium hmm. right you have to just let it be free for a while to to let it find its place and we've stopped doing it because all these regulators come in and say that you know we're doing this to protect a set of people and all that right but you know i i'm still not buying that argument because i hear of so many frauds happening in this space day in and day out but frauds people happen everywhere up. but then you don't have a regulator here but frauds happen everywhere you have a I mean, that's look, a, look, that's, look, a very, see, that's no argument uh, no 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 Here's you can't the, say that you trust the system there is no need for a regulator and when i tell you a fraud you say but you know they happen everywhere there, there could be a regulator on at the country level for exchanges or mm. for anybody who's ah, building so on top of the service you are conceding that there should be a regulator there there, there should be a regulator yeah. for the public i would however, say that there however, shouldn't be but yeah, yeah however, a regulator for the exchange for, not for, for the, the exchanges currency. or anybody who's providing a these service wallet service providers on, on top of the these exchanges that yeah, you so explain me off i mean i keep my bitcoin in a wallet provider yeah. there are, what what guarantee is that wallet provider will tomorrow say that because boss, Bec- that is where you need to educate yourself is this a non custodial wallet or is this a custodial wallet a custodial wallet is one where the exchange holds my holds access to my crypto if they go bust i lose my wallet if you know what a non custodial wallet is you, why don't you give us uh, an yeah. example actually i don't know okay yeah. so can i yeah go ahead i go i keep giving this example yeah. Yeah. you have you have a lot of money or jewelry at home right you buy a safe and you keep it inside that safe is with you your only responsibility is that you protect that safe and the keys and the keys right so that your money is safe inside it that's non custodial wallet you control the wallet with you you are only responsibility is that you don't let the password out and the money is with you mm-hmm. nobody else can take it all right. right i can buy that but uh, anything else the non custodial wallets is something like a bank locker right okay you go and put every money over there or bank account you go and put a, put your money inside the bank bank goes bust you lose your money uh-huh. bank's locker gets uh, you know stolen uh, opened and stolen you lose that money for sure there are insurances and all those things that are Does there but crypto have insurance it, they do some of them uh, some of so these the non we will come have, we will, yeah. we will yeah. come to exchanges so you're saying there are two kinds of exchanges custodial but the idea see here's the thing right we have a market and that's why we have exchanges we there was a need for people to easily invest in cryptocurrency that's why we exchanges but if you go to a fundamental uh, to a maximalist or to someone who believes in crypto they're not going to tell you to keep the money in exchange they're going to tell you dude banks are doing this you know banks are taking your money and that money is not even in your control so take that control back with cryptocurrencies keep the crypto in your own safe keep the crypto in your own wallet i mean right? it's the same argument there uh, uh, I mean, at this point, I just want to know what is the difference between Ethereum, blockchain, and what is a stable coin? Uh, I, it's, if it's supposed to be stable, why does its price keep fluctuating? I mean, it's called a stable <laughs> coin. <laughs> See, I think most stable coins do tend to uh, uh, to stick around to the dollar. Yeah, yeah they yeah, do. To the they value do. Of what was the example? Anshul, we were last discussing US Terra. Is that uh, what you're talking about? Tether, we were discussing about no, it. We want Tether, the other one that... Terra Luna. Terra Luna, Terra, Terra yeah. Luna. yeah. So Luna. that's what you Someone Terra. was telling me that it's a stable coin, but it's quite unstable. And I said to them, what do you mean? <laughs> like, it's called a stable coin. Let's dial it back from this serious conversation. One thing that I've been like, from the production, a question has come is, when the mining started, the graphic card has been very expensive. Right. See, now again, you know, this is why you know when you sit and talk about cryptocurrencies there's so many things that you know it could take hours right graphic cards is what we call it gpus right graphical processing unit so graphic card based mining happens for certain cryptocurrencies like ethereum but you cannot mine bitcoin with graphic cards right so they, there is a special mechanism for mining uh, bitcoin it's called asics asynchronous uh, integration chips so those those things are uh, used to mine bitcoin graphic cards are used to mine ethereum and such other eth hash basically is the hashing algorithm jab tak ethereum rahega tab tak graphic card mein hota rahega ethereum is now moving to proof of stake and we i think we will discuss it in a bit but as long as the markets go up there is always going to be people interested in mining cryptocurrencies as a person from think, finance would you advise yeah. like it's better yeah, to invest think, in ethereum or nvidia look today in today's state it, see this is like i think i think this is like you know 
with the do you want to, in the california gold rush <clears throat> do you want to invest in companies that sell shovels or do you want to invest in people who go and mine the gold or do you want to go and mine the gold yourself that's a nice right yeah so this is basically the crypto gold rush is that what you're saying It, so see, it, it has its cycles, yes. right? It has its cycles. So when when Bitcoin was tending towards sixty thousand, Ethereum was tending towards four thousand. It was a rush. Like people started fomoing in. Can't right? we so, say like even today a crypto bubble is just going up and up, and most of the cryptocurrencies will go bust at after a point of time when I think it's the, the one the, when the fundamental war starts. Because let's say it has happened with the housing industry in the U.S. The internet internet boom definitely made sure that all the false uh, internet businesses that were there in the rush they they did go bust they will and fall out and and that's the case you see every four years in the crypto space also some tokens yeah. that may be doing very well right now which may have absolutely no fundamentals have insane valuations and that's just because of a lot of retail fomoing into the market trying to buy that token which gives them that 100 or 1000 x which people achieved from bitcoin when they started investing in 12 or 13 so everybody wants to find the next bitcoin they don't care about fundamentals they don't want to do the research and invest in like a old old gen asset like a bitcoin or ethereum they want the new, new chip. <laughs> yeah they want the new shit coin which is going to do a 1000x well, and even that's so far the new chip is concerned i think we have all been advocating the ethereum is this revolutionary thing that has happened but when it happened let's be clear the company owned close to 75 to 80% of the entire uh, coins that were there uh, and they did a pre mine they did a pre mine before the launch and right. in a way the day they started and the market was open for people to buy ethereum the company shot up in value because they had they literally created a situation for themselves where they owned close to 60 72 million Yeah, ethereum coins 72 million and ethereum. the ones which were offered to the public were at a very high price so one pr- person from owning zero in actual okay let me not use actual money zero in the conventional currencies in the world now owned probably billions of dollars because of that trick which they was didn't. very much problematic in comparison to something idealistic like what satoshi nakamoto did that the day he started bitcoin he had zero and he himself mined 1 million bitcoins after that yeah so here's the thing right um when satoshi started the bitcoin um, uh, you know algorithm went live uh, he mined it with two computers there was a virtual machine and there was his own computer so what did he do he just transacted with the, with himself and created money out of thin air yeah he did the same thing ethereum what they did was uh, they pre mined and they kept 72 million tokens for the core team at the time right but you cannot say it was worth billions it is worth billions now it wasn't worth billions then it was a experiment it was an experiment that worked out a lot of coins came name coin came before ethereum right uh, xrp actually came before ethereum ripple what we call it, right uh, there were a couple more other coins they didn't work so Ethereum at that time was also an exper- experiment, and it seemed to work. Now, the idea is always like Satoshi Nakamoto has a million bitcoins. We don't know who that person or that group is, and they've not been active for a while. But nobody fears that Satoshi Nakamoto is going to be one day coming into the market and selling his one one million bitcoins. Why? I mean, that's a possibility, isn't it? That's a possibility, but the thing is, it's disincentivizing to the idea of decentralization or the idea behind. But you're Bitcoin, saying that right? someone com- does control a million bitcoins who's sleeping over his million or millions of bitcoins today. But what five years from now, it turns out that Santoshi was in a cave in Japan, had taken you know <laughs> leave from like, um, and then Santoshi is like, wow, you know, I come back to reality, and this place is popping, y'all. And then he goes like, release that stuff into the market. Well, if that so, happens, uh, he'll probably be caught if I'm not wrong. Why? One, ca- one Who ca- will catch him? There okay. is no regulator. So there no, is, that happens. I so, think. Yeah, that that is a completely separate discussion about if Satoshi Nakamoto was to reactivate his wallet now, which is being lying dormant for about eight or nine years. Yeah. If it is reactivated, yeah. And if he wants to end cash, as you say, he wants to book his profits, he will have to move into a centralized channel where he is able to end cash his profits, Liquidated. like an exchange. And there are multiple ways how to track transactions on the chain, on the block blockchain, yeah. as well as track transactions on an exchange. It's not that. 
if I were to transact on the blockchain, I would not be caught or Satoshi Nakamoto cannot be identified. It's very easy to no, identify. No, I'm sure if you're throwing in a million blockchains into the market, you will be identified. But just coming, taking a step back right now, uh, there is another concept that I've been dying to ask, honestly. What the hell is an <laughs> NFT? <laughs> and okay. how does it differ from uh, 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 Bitcoin, from Ethereum sure. and from everything else? Because, uh, I mean, these terms are used so interchangeably. Yeah. That it is very difficult for a common man or a common consumer to understand what the hell are we talking about. So I really want to know what it is. Let's talk about another question that you had asked, which is tokenization. What is tokenization? Yes, it, it, tokenization. Yeah, it essentially means I pick up this mic and I, I create an equivalent unit on the blockchain or a token, which is which basically records ownership of this mic. If I were to transfer that ownership to you and everybody agrees that the legitimate ownership of this mic will now belong to the person who owns that token on the blockchain, then we are we, we have sort of created an economy where we are trading tokens and there is an underlying asset which will also be moved when we trade that token. Okay. That's just tokenization. That's why, thanks a lot. That's a very good example. And I want to kind of just like probe this further. So here's a mic. First of all, we need to ask ourselves who owns it right now before I even talk about selling it. Isn't that the obvious sense? Because you came and you just sold this mic to Anshul, but we don't know who the owner of the mic is yet. Yeah. So that's a big question that who owns the mic for you to even sell? Let's keep that aside. Sure. Let's keep that aside. Uh, you decide to sell this mic to Anshul. Uh, so what are you actually selling? Are you selling the mic or are you selling something else? I'm selling a token. I'm, I'm actually just making my life easier by instead of uh, telling him that Anshul, would you like to buy this mic or telling a hundred different people in an, uh, in, on probably Facebook or Instagram that let's, I, I want to sell this mic. Do you want to buy Assuming it? the mic belongs to you. The mic belongs to me. Okay. If, if I, if I'm not, if I'm selling a mic that doesn't belong to me, you would be I'm surprised. trying to scam <laughs> someone. And that's, that's actually why tokenize, tokenization is yet to take off. Okay. Real estate has not been tokenized yet. Okay. There are so many use cases of tokenization, but because the current method of ownership and transfer of ownership, whether it's land registries or anything else, that needs to be digitized. That needs to work in parallel, in tandem with transfer of ownership on the chain. It's it's still a very, very nascent and a very budding concept. Tokenization in, in its current form, you're seeing as um, let's let's talk about let's talk about NFTs. So I'm sorry. Yeah, what yeah. is the NFT here? I still yeah, I'm still yeah. not able to wrap my head. Where is so the NFT? Have we have we understood? You can tokenize anything on the blockchain. Okay, correct? so you have tokenized this mic yeah. and you have sold it to Anshul. And what does Anshul pay you in then? The he can pay. The yeah, he, he can pay. Had? Yeah, he the can. Bitcoin chocolate. He can pay yeah. me a chocolate I'm or a coffee. I'm loving the parallels you're drawing mm -hmm. with like Bitcoin right. and chocolate. No, I'm and... gonna just call it the Bitcoin <laughs> yeah. chocolate because yeah. it's explain me like he, I'm five. Yeah. Now. Ne another word Nemesh mentioned was fungibility. Fungibility means okay. if you give me one Bitcoin and then you ask me two days later, can you give me that Bitcoin back? I'll give you another one. I'm okay with it. As long as I can verify that it's it's Bitcoin, what I is, don't mind. What does it mean? Okay, let's Fungibility start. means... What does fungible even mean? Fungible means I, I don't mind exchanging one particular asset that I own for another of the same kind because they all make the same... Um, uh, they, they all derive the same value. So you're saying these note, four mics are fungible? I, I don't know the technical not details. Not this mic. This mics. mic is special to me and like I won't replace it. So but, like it's not fungible. That's the master mic. 400 rupee <laughs> notes are fungible. Yeah. See, oh, oh, okay. the, yeah. The, the money the, is fungible. Yeah. See, money money is fungible because Kashmir se leke Kanyakumari tak you'll use the same currency and it works, right? It's fungible in India. It's in the border. Okay, what if I was to yeah. take a 500 rupee note right now? Yeah. Oh, this is a tenor. I'm that's, that's fine. <laughs> and if I give you a tenor instead Would of Would anyone have a pen? No. Nah. Okay, assuming I was to take you were right to write now, something, and if on it. I wanted to sign over here and said, Thank "Keep you. it," yeah, and I want this back tomorrow. Yeah, would you still call it a fungible contract? Depends on what you want. Can I give you another ten rupee note? But I rather like that one, you know. So then this becomes a non-fungible token because Is it's that, unique. That's an NFT. Yeah, it's basically a ten rupee note with a signature. No, it's a, it's, it's something a that identifier. has that is unique. That, that cannot be replicated. Yeah. Okay. So, to give your example now, this 10 rupee note somehow denotes the ownership of that mic. Okay. Right? Uh, because Oof. you said there is an underlying asset to the non-fungible Now, we've got two assets involved. Let's take a simpler concept that okay. this 10 rupee note is fungible as long as it does not have your signature on it. You can give it to anybody and they will accept it no matter what. As soon as it has your signature on it, yeah. it has a different value for you. It has a different value for Anshul or me. I will still take it as currency, but I wouldn't care about the signature on it. 
but there will never exist another note with the same serial number a 10 rupee note with your signature on it so, that's how it makes it not okay fungible. got it I, i think i understand now what you're saying is that a normal 10 rupee note would be a fungible asset yeah we could all exchange it we could all say give it to me tomorrow here there and life would be good uh, it's all fungible but if i was to take a specific note with a specific serial number and say i want this particular note back tomorrow that becomes non fungible yes great so now we have established what a uh, fungible or non fungible difference is yeah what the hell is a token a token is basically a uh, a unit which is issued on the blockchain or an asset which is issued on the I mean instead of a 10 rupee note it can be just this mug note. or maybe this gavel and, i believe and similar to bitcoin bitcoin is a unit of account on the blockchain no i think i'll just take one step back to explain this you know this is a note why do we call it a note because it's its name right uh-huh, uh-huh. so the government issues it we call it a note it's a standard no- name for it yeah. right there is a blockchain on top of that i'm issuing certain things i'm creating it and issuing it we are calling it tokens right so that's that's just it i mean right? i'm still trying to my picture of nft is a bunch of board apps looking like lamba jaira latka ke wa or you know some crypto punks some hazy image So I'm still trying to wrap my head that this whole ownership. So hey, that's yeah. just like trying to learn about it and not learning about it. I think we understand the non-fungible fungibility part of anything that exists around us. Let's say, for example, tomorrow if I get the same kurta as you, I can give it to you, but you won't take it because it's not your kurta. It's like it doesn't have my smell, or I I don't feel comfortable with it. So the kurta that you're wearing right now becomes a non-fungible kurta for you. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, you're right. And but all the other kurtas that are produced by the same brand with the same color with the same fabric with the same design are fungibles so the moment it has any degree of uniqueness to you as to what value it holds to you not in terms of the value of the currency or anything but a special unique something <laughs> yeah you know, i'm just trying to put my finger on what that thing is and so it just i'm not so yeah, i think that board something app, will board, be very subjective for board, 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 board apes let's take board apes has 10000 images of monkeys 10000 gifs or rather images of monkeys in yeah. different attire yeah and people are paying millions for it are you joking are you serious i'll control the, right save as and Look, i put it as my display I, picture stop me but go, you, you go can do that yeah. but you can't prove that you own that board game okay yes it's a gif but People then it doesn't get you the access is <laughs> right see that's the thing i am the biggest critic uh, of board apes pricing that you can find from the crypto community okay i mean i think it's a marketing gimmick yeah no it's not but see if you really look into it and i have because i have to criticize something i have to learn about it right if you really look into it it's simple you have 10000 images of monkeys that you can screenshot of course but they are all on a blockchain those 10000 images are on blockchain you own that so these are unique images so that's why the known no i own the image you own the image i own so if i am going to an exchange right now and if, you know if this was the exchange we do have everything here and if i was to say here's like 10 chocolate bitcoin and show can i have an image of a board monkey and if you were to give me the image of the board monkey I become the proud owner of a board monkey which I own. Yes. You know that's where the difficulty lies because I was doing some kind of research uh, in my kind of short career as a lawyer and I found uh, some things which state otherwise and uh, yeah where is it? You're going to find it technical in it. So uh, so let me <laughs> clarify why you find it. Okay. okay. You have the commercial li- rights to it but the copyright remains with the company that created board apes. Uh, so oh wow well then wait 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 let me just so what is the revenue stream oh, I think of the, uh, all all of the ips so, reside with so the, the reason the, the reason why they've kept the copyright to themselves is so that collectively nobody can create a, a board ape like so, image for themselves that doesn't you own a board ape yacht club nft that monkey is yours right you can create you can commercialize it you can sell it to someone you can rent it to someone great all of those rights are yours so the pricing of these nft is it like a jungle auction going on right now okay, where everybody is madly going initially so, this coming back to just this one point i'm sorry i'll just let you continue uh, it says that this is in uh, the terms and conditions of rareable which i'm told is one of the biggest exchanges for uh, exchanging nfts yeah. uh, nfts nfts which is basically giving uh, crypto chocolates for board apes you know mm-hmm. something like that and this is what variable says it says that there is no guarantee or assurance of the uniqueness originality or quality of any collectible or collectibles data uh, there cannot be any guarantee or assurance that the purchase or holding of the collectible confers any license to or ownership of the collectible metadata basically you don't get any license to or ownership of the metadata 
or other intellectual property associated with the collectible or any other right entitlement notwithstanding that user may rightfully own or possess the nft associated with collectible so i own a collectible but i don't own the ipr or anything with it it's very difficult See, you, what do you, i own the thing is that you've read the you've read the terms of rarible which is like a broker it's a marketplace right so amazon is going to make you sign a term that we are not responsible if what you saw and what you bought and when you received it uh, you know it wasn't uh, the same item they help you return it they help you you know uh, make the seller pay for it and all that but they are not essentially responsible for it so board ape yacht club has its own terms and conditions that say that if you buy a board ape nft you yeah. have the commercial rights to it but open sea and rarible is going to always safeguard themselves saying that we don't ensure that you are getting those rights this it's is that yeah. nft it's just a market i am still right? confused this is merely a marketplace it's a market the, the terms that it's you are a, it's referring it's a to broker. they are not issuers of the nft okay they're not issuers yeah. they what will, what is uh, then let's talk about something here you know this this term that the user used it for crypto i'm sorry for bitcoin as well minting a bitcoin minting ethereum yes uh, what is minting an nft creation. minting an nft simply means creation it's just a fancy word that's used when when as uh, when we were talking about uh, bitcoin mining when we said this chocolate you get for doing certain work when you when you are first in the class and you solve that puzzle that chocolate is something that the teacher has actually baked fresh it never existed ah, before so it's so the baking it's, it's yeah it's but created but i didn't know if the teacher owned that chocolate also she baked it what she, if she stole she, it she owned the goods what if she stole it uh she, the oven is in the classroom the you can see the teacher dough? create the dough put it in the oven and pull it out of the oven you can't you, you can't you can verify that steal that chain. you can verify where it came from yeah. okay fair okay. enough so minting is a process and then you give it to me but it turns out he's saying you don't give that you just give a token so what i get is basically just a promise that i this you own this nft the nft is still owned by the board art uh, what no. the board no, art no, no, it's club. not owned by them it's created by them it's, it's created by them, by them. They, now, they keep the ipr they give you a piece of paper with a promise that depends you depends on the nft minter what kind of rights they want to give you okay, variable is, is a broker variable is not a minter it's not a minter i am the minter and I anybody can be NFTs. a minter Can I ask, like, what are the revenue streams of buying a buying an NFT? Like, why do you buy it? Like, what's the right. purpose? And that's a that's a very good question. And like, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Like, what is the point? Example, like, in right? terms I of a Bitcoin, the, like I see, like there is an intrinsic value that there'll be a limited twenty one million of them, and demand and supply is going to regulate. What kind of price is in NFT? Sim- I've heard like metaverse simple. and like how much, how many times the NFT gets repeated in the metaverse or things like that. Like, what is the exact thing? I'm very are, unclear. There are three. very big reasons why you would value an nft number one is flex this is a completely digital space <laughs> you do, you don't you don't you mean have, a digital flex yeah you, you 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 a lot of people in the crypto space don't even put their actual profile picture they want to they'll put a picture of a monkey or anything else and sometimes when you've done well you want to show you want to be able to flex that you're rich or you, you made it right so what better than a board ape to show that you've spent half a million dollars acquiring a picture of a monkey that is now your profile picture on twitter or whatsapp <laughs> or anywhere else so it's it's a way of having a digital identity or a that's digital one. avatar that's one the second is basically you think there is certain underlying value of this asset or for some reason it is underpriced I want to be able uh, to buy it now and sell it for ten twenty x uh, two years from now. Is yeah, investing like investing is appreciation. Investing is is appreciation. Do we see That's like two. a certain yeah. level of pointlessness in it? Like Jack Dorsey sell, selling his first tweet for two million yes. dollars, and and then it it fell down. Yeah, it fell the, down because there was no intrinsic value to it. Nobody really wanted it later. Yeah, he sold he sold it for two million. But then there were other examples like NBA selling LeBron's uh, yeah, yeah. golden hoop, and then like you see I like what's the point the, of all of yeah, this? I don't understand. Yeah. You eventually yeah, find equilibrium, and equilibrium for before, Jack Dorsey's first tweet was before you come to that point three, right? I just want to ask you guys like. Why do you have these posters here? Why do we have a Jern written here? Why do we have uh, That's this? got to do because the show is called a Jern. Yes. That's got to do because uh, it's a show about legal issues. Yeah, so right. Lane, those I, pictures are, you know, to oh, give this place an upmarket look. Uh, okay. To make it look more expensive than it actually is. Right. Yeah. And uh, you know, the, But these are the assets. owner of the house said we can't remove these shelves. Okay. So, so these are these are your If assets. I put it over there. <laughs> <laughs> so, these are your assets. Essentially, okay. these are your assets that are also part of your identity. 
right yeah. you would not trade it tomorrow if a journal is has like 100 episodes on it you would not be willing to easily trade off your assets with anything I else i mean i am not so welcome. sure we have to speak to the producers to see what will their producer says no we won't i can assure you that <laughs> <laughs> that's a call so but i point, get sent my in. point being that there are going to you are going to start 20 podcast in the future right How Ten do you them, know that? I am just saying. <laughs> oh, you are going. To, I thought sure. somebody is outing it. <laughs> so tomorrow you are going to, and then you'll you'll realize that five of them are not doing well, and then fifteen of them are doing well, and then you'll also streamline ten out of it, right? And then your assets will come along with it. It will create value for it. In the near future, when everything is digital and we are all sitting with our Oculuses or, or you know VR headsets, you'll probably have a presence in there also, where I can use the assets, I can play with the gavels, the mugs inside that metaverse. So that's the those, fundamental. But yeah, I yeah. want to uh, want to know the third revenue stream that we missed out on, which is monetization of IP. And, and a, a lot of but uh, you don't get any IP. You that's do. Where you I'm so do. Confused. That's I think. See, you you trying to you need to refer to terms of yeah maybe the binter. I the did. Issue. I did that also, and I yeah. refer to another binter. Sorry, I just got a bunch of people. That's fine. If you can find it, we can you know discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah variable yeah. is not a great example because it's a broker service. Yeah, it's a marketplace. For, for, right. for board a- ap art club you do get access to certain ips and you can then license so- someone to use your board ap for certain purposes like uh, and and then get paid for it so potentially in the future if your monkey is the monkey that probably say donald trump wants to use as his profile picture but he doesn't own it and you're not willing to sell it he can pay you a royalty or a licensing fee and you let him use it so, a lot of people have actually rented their monkeys N- to nfts to uh merchandising companies so they've created t-shirts out of it shoes out of it you know there's a cafe can you give us some examples yeah i don't you're talking Seth about rogan. in the metaverse yeah, in no, the no, metaverse no, or no, in no, real no, life monkey said the rogan wanted to create an uh an animated series right and okay. one of the characters is the monkey uh that they own as an nft the bayc monkey that they the own board, right the board yacht so, uh, yeah, board ap yacht club board ap yacht club it said rogan owns it correct okay. so He's so, commercially exploiting it, using yeah, and that's the rights that you have. But you don't get any ownership. Like you have, like you, rights you have the creator. The, you have the commercial rights to the NFTs for sure. The BAYC rights say you have the commercial rights to the NFT that you own. Okay. What you, what they hold as the company is the copyright. So collectively, if somebody tries to copy it, like if you, there are ten thousand board apes, right? As as a lawyer, I just know three rights: patents, trademark, and copyright. Sure. No, there is commercial rights, right? A bit on the mic, like the the commercial rights are part of that patent trademark. I mean, I just know three intellectual property rights, which are copyright, trademark, and patents. If I don't have the copyright, uh, you saying I have the trademark? It's a, it's a. You have the commercial rights to monetize this. The copyright. I mean, look, I'm not a lawyer, so unfortunately, I would not be able to give you the exact breakup of it. Within copyright, you have what Yuga Labs or the creator of BAYC does is. There are ten thousand monkey images. Anywhere someone tries to reproduce it, they can collectively sue them. So you don't have to worry about it. Let's uh-huh. say somebody tries to copy your monkey, Yuga Labs will take so the responsibility. So Yuga Labs to then becomes the right overarching regulator. Yeah, but, but I thought the whole point of this was decentralization. See, but there nah, is centralization. No, there is no centralization. They are doing it for the purpose of you know uh, simplifying stuff. Uh, you you know, can sue that person as are well. Are you calling? Is that what a DAO is? Is that a DAO? Is Yuga Labs a DAO? Because I have a lot of questions about DAOs. They are creating a DAO, are, right? Like yeah. there's an ape yeah. universe or something yeah. like that. They're creating a DAO. I think ape universe. Uh, without getting into details of Yuga Labs DAO, we can simply address what a DAO is. Yeah. And and a DAO is basically any other organization like a company or a partnership or or any other collective number of people working together uh, towards a similar objective. But instead of having a registered entity, they just operate. as uh, they they follow a bunch of rules which are again set as as code into the blockchain this is valid those 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 rules are validated by validated and implemented by computers all over the world and if you have to take a decision hmm. for example the dao wants to allocate what um, is dao like a dao is what is the full form for dao yeah, let's decentralized like autonomous, like autonomous organization, organization. Uh, it's called a decentralized autonomous organization decentralized is, autonomous organization yeah there is all no right. ceo there is no ceo there okay. is no single person who can take Uh, very important decisions for the DAO. Say, uh, give us an example or a couple of examples of maybe you know DAOs in India and abroad, so that our viewers can better understand. 
कलेक्टिव ऑफ पीपल who uh, and the community who takes decisions on where to invest money or who to you know sort of that's why i have a problem themselves. with like that's these influencers fund. like like you said that they're running a collective and what recently i realized was that ankur wareku the ceo yeah. of nearby he was promoting world yeah world is an exchange though and world went bust Yes. It didn't. It didn't go bust, but I mean, it just made it. They've asked for moratorium. It, Six months moratorium is it, what they say. It may go bust. It, it, it may go bust. Uh, uh, it, it suspended all transactions. People's money yes. are, is now kept over there, and nobody has any access to that. Uh, a French company, I think, has come and said that they're gonna US acquire ne- Nexo. Nexo. Yeah. Nexo. Yeah. So what are what is what do you think is the responsibility of these influencers who are giving? financial advice in the name of educating masses and this is cognizant of the fact that 51% of gen z and about 20% of gen generation millennials get their financial advice from tiktok and youtube so what is all this about it's look i i mean you can't blame that right because when we were growing up we i saw my parents get financial advice from a television yeah so it's the medium it's the medium today's medium is tiktok and uh, youtube and facebook so <laughs> That's Fairly agreed, that but right. later on it came to life that all these influencers, Ankur Wareku, took money from Darshan Bhatia. Right, Bhatija, yeah. like for uh, specifically admitted <laughs> later on that four point four seven lakhs had been taken for a YouTube video, which he, in which he was promoting as his as his fair opinion that you should now invest in cryptocurrency through Vault. Yes. So see, there is a very thin line. Look, I understand that it looks bad in hindsight that Ankur Wareko or Akshay Akshay Srivastava or, or all the top influencers in finance yes. came ahead and you know talked to people that if you want to invest in crypto, use Vault, right? It it looks bad in and hindsight. And they took money for it. They took money for it. They were come on, man. Their business is getting sponsorship. They take money from Grow to tell people that you should use Grow to uh, you know buy shares. So it's a business. But then at the end of the day, when Ankur Wareku is coming and saying that you know what, now I'm going to give you a master class on how to do business, <laughs> I'm surely not sending my kid or anybody else's kid to him because he's somebody who is now refusing to acknowledge his responsibility towards the scam. See, it's not a see. Here's the here's the thing, right? That if we look at it from one perspective. we are going to find flaws with it if we sit down to fl- find flaws with it and if we sit down to sort of find nuanced arguments uh, against this we'll probably find that too but there was something fundamentally wrong with world itself why like, because, i think um, one they said that apart you what was unique to them in comparison to anything else in the world was a 12.86% return and they were but giving they were, that they were giving that but we now we see like the sustainability of their model was very much ingrained yeah, in that I mean, satyam was giving you return on equity of a certain amount till they went bust i yeah. mean like scams pay yeah. off till they go bad like that's like, the whole right. point it's called a pyramid so, scheme so it's a lending platform right vault is a lending platform yeah. it is I, taking money from you and it is putting it somewhere else where it can generate more revenue and a lot of such okay. platforms exist and a lot of such platforms did go bust in this cycle right So so what do you think is the key identifier for a platform like this like do we have to check out the people who are making it what is they, their it's background It's not the see it's not the fault of the people either it's the it's the fault of collective fault regulator. of uh, no man what's a, what's a regulator, a regulator going to do if, Okay no I, I think I disagree here if a regulator did exist for you exchange d- platforms there would be some sort of stipulation that you need to give x amount of notice before before you stop trading withdrawals deposits all of a sudden one fine day i think that is something but that is it will still have a bank run right and yeah. they will not be able to defi- uh, fill up the deficit they, so they would not be able to correct but it a, a bank cannot just shut its shop one particular day a bank will have to be open 
if there is a bank run the the run literally happens and then the government at the back end they kind of start resupporting capitalizing the bank but a bank can't just shut its doors one particular day and say we are not going to be uh, providing services i beg to differ i think banks have done that banks, in the past yeah, i mean overnight that, right? in like it, it's a that. one hour notice also everything is over and cooperative bank yeah like they, they these scams have come to like it, it wasn't right? like there was any I, previous notice that was given to the public at large and people's money have been frozen like it's not a matter of debating that whether did it happen or not people with their entire life savings did lose their money and their access to their money which they had deposited See, in their can, bank because the bank went bust I can, and we had a regulator ensuring that things like these don't happen but these regulators haven't answered they did not okay. so so far as why cryptocurrency should exist i am fairly sold on the idea of a free market but surely i will give myself the privilege of one educating myself on whether the system is foolproof or not two whether there are scenarios in which the system has failed itself and then i'll go down to the reasons as to why it did because well let's be let's be honest about it that things have gone bad in a lot of cases like billions of do- dollars have vanished overnight but at the same point of time something so fundamental like bitcoin i don't think that bitcoin has faltered anywhere anshul i'm going to just read out a report at indian express this is uh, dated 11th july and it says khan <clears throat> had invested almost 60% of his life savings he says he is upset with all the youtubers who blindly promoted the cryptocurrency srivastava was a youtuber who is an expert on cryptocurrencies we are yet to determine what an expert on cryptocurrency is yet because uh, i mean let's Ev- park it over here everyone is an expert on cryptocurrencies look at linkedin everybody is a crypto enthusiast <laughs> metaverse <laughs> influencer <laughs> they say everyone is a genius in the advisor. bull run yeah. and often yes, explains exactly. blockchain related concepts like tokens and stable coins we are yet to come back to what a stable coin is <laughs> with 1.1 million subscribers he has made several videos for vault and even for vault's own youtube page mm-hmm. interestingly several youtubers promoted vault promising high returns on their investment this includes srivastava ankar variku booming bulls that's 1.7 million subscribers the agenda of the videos was pretty straightforward invest your money and get 12% returns on your fixed deposits against your ft now my problem is not with so much them giving out free card advice you possibly cannot seriously be comparing a fixed deposit instrument where the money that you give to the bank is invested in a liquid market cycle run for 90 days in a triple a rated bond and a cryptocurrency i mean this is just blasphemous What is the accountability these guys have? Is this a joke? I Wait, think the, what the, is the, the no no? But hang on, one second. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. So I mean, I am what is the, on, no, on, no. on behalf of these Look. people who are sitting in. Okay, let's circle back. I will Sorry. not. I belong to a poor country called India. I see poor in the sense of we <laughs> yeah. are a very rich country culturally, but we are poor in the sense of we are a developing country, right? Yeah. Uh, our our gross national our GDP and our uh, average salaries they are not as per a developed country market standards. now here you have a percentage of the population which is anyways not very literate forget financial literacy so you you have these three or four guys who come along and then they say we will tell you what to do with your money without disclosing their own conflict of interest without disclosing that they are taking money on behalf of these companies to pitch them and actually make a case allow me to complete and actually make a case for substituting fds with investments in nfts or vaults or cryptos and what not number one now when we think of growing up in middle class india our parents were very averse to stock markets because they all lost money there yeah they all lost because they all invested on that one uncle or that one tauji or that one person who said isme laga isme laga and they all lost money and they shied away from proper and responsible investing in stock markets ever since right 41% of gen z now is taking advice from tiktok influencers they will shy away from making responsible and comprehensible returns on their investment products because they went by what a tom dick and harry told them on instagram put lost their money and then scared was so scared that they shied away from markets for all their lives you are not just ruining their life moments or life savings in that moment you're actually putting them off responsible investing for their entire lifetimes and where is the accountability for that is is that a question towards the crypto industry in general or the influencer marketing industry in general I, there it's must towards be the latter there must be regulations around influencers there is you'd be surprised and i can i read some for you yeah sure i mean we, ask we, we, right? we, we come from the crypto space right and i would think that even if an influencer is selling a nail polish no, which could which could potentially melt a girl's nails and he's been paid for it again the the the, the same regulations or the same implications sh- should be applicable fair enough and s- since you said uh, about uh, accountability 
Okay, I'm going to speak about two things. Uh, it's the Advertising Standards Council of yeah. India, right? Yeah. So they say something about material connection. Now we need to understand what a material connection is. I did some research, you know, uh, and I found out a thing or two about material connection. When you, as an in, first of all, this definition of influencer is just, anyways, you are an influencer, and then you're influencing people, but you are taking, let's say, free products in return. When you are taking gifts and other discounts in return. when you are or your family members are related or you doing a barter system these are material connections irrespective of whether your advice is biased or unbiased you are supposed to go on stage and say guys this is basically a full disclosure that x y z has happened and i'm giving you this advice basis y z and z i have never seen one influencer give this disclosure they all say yeah yeah do your own diligence please yeah please listen i am not telling you do your own diligence but if you have to do your due diligence you would i'd i'd say invest here i mean that is just because the where do you draw a distinction between content and advertisement you have tanmay bhat coming on tv and telling kids to go all crypto go super dao go do dao i mean what the hell is a dao i mean i did some research it's called signaling era i mean they have various eras to it they say that yes we are going to become a dao at a later stage right now we control everything so you say that dao will operate as a no, will be treated as a non binding advisory signals to the rarible company so rarible claims that they have their own coin which makes them a dao but this is only at the autonomous era which will happen maybe 30 years down the line so what the hell is a dao what is your signaling era and what is tanmay bhat's accountability are questions which no one is able to give me an answer to and i am enraged i am angry i understand look i think that you have to understand this right influencers collectively uh, tanmay bhat or anybody for that matter ankur ariko or akshat shivas we need to look at them as in, we look at them as influencers but they are actually you know they are actually businessmen right what they are doing is creating their own business of you know educating people or selling stuff to them is that really them. about educating though it is see if you really okay now i understand that you are enraged right but listen to this side of the argument i think i would call it affiliate marketing no, no. I, fine <laughs> you can call it that but look look man we live in a in a socio uh, you know uh, secular society we india but if you really think about it and if you believe in a right wing uh, you know sort of philosophy we need to be more capitalist to empower people to make better decisions for themselves yes agreed agreed okay wait oh, hold certainly. on right so now how do you change an entire generation from uh, you know taking advice from someone sitting next to them or their relatives hmm. to taking advice from uh, you know people who are perceived to be successful in their lives right that's the first step of turning towards capitalism you stop listening to people next to you and start listening to experts right now we can always argue that these people who who we call experts have built that persona but they are not really experts i mean they're self right denounced or experts Correct. i don't think they're self denounced but, but see, i think there's a lot that's of abuse step, right then they go to this experts then they lose money right but what we've done essentially is taken them from one step ahead from listening to people in their own circle to listening to people who they deem as experts when they lose money over there they are going to go after that that akrosh happens right they and should. and probably they'll not be able to do anything about it but i disagree with you in that 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 is not going to turn the generation into uh, investing against it it's probably turning change the generation into doing better research for themselves oh, and identifying that's that's a bit of a stretch come on man you lose money therefore next time you will research better yeah that's i think how we, I, I most think of the people learn most, we tell them the guy who lost 60% of his life but, but that's look yeah. here's the thing right i am being very very uh, very rude about this but if that guy invested 60% money in one platform it's that person's fault man it's not ankur variku's fault it's not akshat srivastava's so, fault so you don't think like it's, if ankur variku is uh, publicly saying on his youtube channel that put your money in vault and a person simply just kills himself ankur variku shouldn't go to jail why i think there is there's a significant responsibility dude, of Tucker, the platform Tucker as well dr clarkson is the biggest example you know there was a there was a group of people who sued tucker clarkson that he he pushes information that is incorrect on his show it's the most popular show in us right and what did the court rule that it's entertainment so it's 
it's always going to rule against the people so if the people are not going to be smart about it we can hold these influencers accountable okay, you know what like no, I, no, I, 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 because I, I, people I, are not financially literate in our country and they will not be smart about it and if you don't tell them about safe asset classes if you don't tell them about asset diversification if you don't teach them a thing or two about uh, but you also funds. have to tell them that the, their money in fi- if the if the us inflation stands at 9.1% the uh, the effective inflation in india would be around double digits and if they are putting their money in fds and stock market and index funds they're probably losing value of their money you have to tell them that also i mean right see, you I have agree. to tell them that I and mean, it's as free as do? it can get right yeah, now. I, I don't have a problem with ten. Please understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I don't have a problem with influencers giving out advice. I have a problem with material connections and the lack of disclosures which are there. I have never seen, for example, in a 15-second video, which is basically a reel, a three-second disclosure, which is, should be there as per the Advertising Councils of India, or any video which is 15 to two minutes. At least one third should be that given. That became effective from first April. Where are your employees? Where are your? I mean. 2019 consumer protection act false and misleading advertisement very simply very simply if you are watching this right now and if you have lost money i would say go and make a complaint against these influencers in a dis- to your district collector do it do it against the director general of consumer protection lodge those complaints because you are as a consumer given those rights if you are paying these guys if you are taking private classes from them if you are a consumer in the real sense not just a free load uh, you know you not just watching not just videos. you but i would advise against consumer protection wahan pe 2 saal ki date milti hai and by the time you'll realize like <laughs> plus you will notice because that. that video is free to watch man no yeah. they're they're hosting private sessions if there is a they private, private if classes. you attended those private sessions for sure yes for yeah. sure but uh, you are not, okay okay i'll tell you what a misleading advertisement is it gives a false guarantee that is likely to mislead the consumer as to the nature substance quality or quantity of product and services it deliberately conceals important information such as the disclosures you were supposed to make okay then you I come see, can, can i ask you a question here if all of these disclosures were in place for instance in ankur varikus video or akshat shivastav's video he he made all of the right disclosures as per the ascii and he did his own research as well i still feel from from probably the experience we've had it was very difficult to identify yeah. what went wrong with world not because of influencer marketing regulation no, issues no they had personal because, invested yeah because but the, a responsibility the, the, hoti hai na matlab dekho aam aadmi ka lut gaya aur ankur varu ko abhi bhi gurgaon mein house party kar raha hai uska bhi 30 lakh rupaye na rahe bhai uska bhi 30 lakh rupaye par uske paas 400 crore hai uska dekho na so now now he is the thing right he doesn't say that put in 100% of your money he will go and say ki bhai maine 30 लाख डाला है बिकॉज़ माय नेटवर्थ इज 30 करोस मतलब तुम्हें मैं सिखा दूंगा कि केमिकल्स कैसे रिएक्ट करते हैं और तुम इससे फेस क्रीम बनाओ या बम बनाओ या तुम्हारे ऊपर एंपावर्ड यू मेक द डिसीजन यू हैव ऑल ऑफ द टूल्स अवेलेबल हाउएवर बट कमिंग बैक लुक आई डोंट आई डोंट लाइक सी अक्षत श्रीवास्तव पेडल्स अ लॉट ऑफ मिस इंफॉर्मेशन एंड एवरी टाइम आई करेक्ट हिम ही ब्लॉक्स मी अक्रॉस चैनल्स ओके राइट यार आ जाएगा सो बट बट आई विल गो आउट ऑन अ लिम एंड से दैट it's not the influencers fault that world went bust yeah. right if today i have also money stuck in world but it helps me sleep comfortably but there are people who i suggested to uh, you know trade on world they have significant money in world see you are not a licensed person as per sebi if you are giving investment advice you are supposed to do we are not you are not giving see he has we just concluded that one of the purposes of nst i'm sorry and it was investor advice that was the third purpose right no that was not nft Second, no, no. No, it was Neither. to flex. identify an opportunity first, and then was, you know. Flex was one. What was the second? Flex case? was one. Identify the second was capital one. appreciation. Yeah. That is an investor. To to no, so but I'm not telling you to no, buy it. No, but right? nobody is giving investment advice. A purpose of an NFT is not investment advice. It's an opportunity to buy and sell. Nobody is telling the NFT has not been created to. to relay advice to people that you can buy an nft that's not the purpose of the existence of an so nft so lakshmi nft which uh, akshat srivastav used to upsell on his channel he never he never that, so the <laughs> so, <laughs> because he's blocked me i guess or zyberse which this other guy you know collaborate so these these were just names they were just they, randomly picking you know they had nothing to do with them otherwise that's See. that the influencer is upselling an nft he's being paid for it that does not mean the reason for existence of an nft is to give investment advice that's the difference no, no, i'm trying I'm to make one of the purposes of nft is to benefit from capital appreciation yes. that's exactly what an investor does 
Yeah, so that doesn't mean that investment advice there will are, be given out. There are conflict case. of interest for sure. There is one as there one. Is as no, there are so many. I mean, there like, is no there is no doubt be, about. I mean, there is a provisions for not only the person who does the misleading advertisement, but also for the company which promotes it. So, ten lakh to bete jo aap keh rahe ho. What do you do I about Sh- uh, Salman Khan now? Tell me. Karo. आर्ग्यूमेंट अगेंस्ट a case against salman khan would be that it's a free market right people can buy and sell tokens there were someone who had 2 million tokens he went ahead and sold those tokens that's why the market dumped it's not salman khan's responsibility to ensure that gari ka price upar hi rahega right similarly uh, akshat shrivastav came out and said that he said he was uh, to quote him guys i am sorry he was i mean what else would he do he came out and told people that There is a platform called Vault where you can get interest of twelve percent if you buy USDT and keep it in a fixed and, deposit. And if you right? were to use it, use that instead of an FD. But that's not a wrong thing. You make more money if you do that. You make more money being a th- local thug or a gunna on the street by being a private money lender. It's not you start to make everyone into a local thug. Yeah, but they're not making anyone into. I'm that. just saying. Look, I'm their job. Saying, I'm see, local thug, no, I'm no, their their job. He is. and i don't even know why i'm supporting but okay <laughs> so the, their job here is to educate people of the new markets new financial aspects and that's what they did and it's unfortunate that world went where it went hmm. but but nemesh i think just sorry to cut you off i think that's where a little bit more research and a little bit more disclosure yeah. can go a long way in helping yeah. an investor <laughs> make a decision and maybe saying that so, by 5% so is so yeah <laughs> no not not only that if if a bank fd is backed by a money market instrument which can be liquidated in 90 days world's fixed deposit number one let's figure out if the the term fixed deposit can be used so loosely or it needs to be used in a particular manner number 2 okay. what ba- what where are you getting that interest from on world you are getting it from a three arrows capital you are getting it from a us terra you are getting from yeah. an anchor what are these protocols that are generating so much yield and if these protocols are risky these protocols are have not been existence for say more than 2 years then an investor must be must be aware of this fact and then take a decision so yeah. yes they could have gone a step further researched a bit more i don't know how many details world would have given on where on where they're generating that yield from but if that was the case then you do empower the investor or the the consumer information a bit more to make a more rational decision so well, that yeah, definitely yeah, is a asking. conclusive uh, thing towards wh- how and why influencers should regulate themselves while being in the crypto space especially knowing fully well that crypto space is highly chaotic it's the in thing i think it's a marketing gimmick If you were to ask me, that's what I wanted I, to actually clarify. Yeah. Like you have pointed you out the marketing kind of angles because I see a lot of these A A, a Horowitz. I think that's another investor. And A sixteen Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yes. keep seeing their name in different kind of corporations. So I really want to know that you know there's so much. Are these companies actually making any marketing spends, or this is all self? On those lines, I actually had like a list of a list of things that have happened in the past, and I was going to like see clarifications. Ki maa kya hua? I was gonna like name the segment "What the fuck," <laughs> like. <laughs> so BitConnect came to life, and the owner comes, the baldy, and is like, "Hey, hey, 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 BitConnect, ha!" Yeah, yeah, it was I think Carlos Matos. Even What though, went wrong? Yeah, BitConnect was also giving interest. You know, they were taking your bitcoins and they were giving you huge amounts of interest in a token called BitConnect token. Right in 2017, when the markets went up, people started asking for their bitcoins back, and they didn't have them. Hence, they went bust. It was a. Sponsor. It was a. It was a MLM. It was the same. Uh, the more I listen to you, the more I feel that there is a requirement for a regulator. Well then, BitConnect, a Ponzi scheme, ki dra khatam ho gaya. One thing is clear: uski his wife was not happy with him when he launched BitConnect, and even after that, today is a magic coach. I don't know who launched BitConnect, honestly, but. Carlos Matos was just a promoter. It, uh, He wasn't. It's uh, very unclear because there was the name in the in uh, in cooperation certificate registered in England was of a guy who hasn't been traced on the internet <laughs> anywhere else. I, the guy in India also was very after BitConnect was Divesh some Darji. Ha, Divesh or something like that. Yeah, and he's I don't know he's 
is is somewhere he's, i mean we don't know where he he's is he's not in a good place yeah. what about elon musk and pump and dump with doge coin what the <laughs> hell is he doing okay so he has he, you want to take this or yeah, i mean he loves doge coin he loves he loves being involved in this space and uh, i mean considering the, the kind of infl- technical knowledge he has and um, how eccentric he is i wouldn't be surprised that elon musk is supporting crypto this in the last two years it's been insane elon musk would put say bitcoin or something on his twitter bio and the markets would start moving so it's it, it's been a pretty um, it's it's been like a roller coaster of a ride um, he is he is trying to promote dogecoin as a means of payment within the tesla ecosystem you you should you he wants you to be able to buy merchandise with tesla eventually you might be able to buy tesla with the uh, with with doge as well um i think a lot of people see elon musk's tweet as the only signal to buy or sell which yeah. which, which which honestly is happening right he's projected His, that image he's like a foolproof yeah mak- but elon musk is just pushing the curtain as much as he can yeah right? but when he's the same argument about I'm, conflict of interest and 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 and, and material disclosures mm-hmm. applies equally to him yeah. i don't and think I, that any rules apply to him so far because he's like yo he has that kind of power to ensure that whatever he wants whenever so you're he wants so you basically saying the rich and powerful get away with whatever they want and it's the common man who ends up shelling I mean, the money we'll be naive to think that yes. they don't and the rules <laughs> of the jungle don't apply in real life that's precisely the point there is needs to be again a regulator for all of this that it's pretty easy if elon musk could disclose his wallet there is an sec but elon musk still tweets about tesla's prices and then he pays 5 million dollars in fine but he makes billions in profit well so, it, surprisingly when it comes to transparency elon musk isn't that great a guy on twitter was actually posting elon musk private yeah, in, jet, private jets yeah. coordinates all the time yeah. and he offered that i'll 5, pay you 5000 dollars 5000 dollars and it's like no i'll take 5 million and then like i don't know where it went but after that things have stopped definitely the thing, the idea of you know the rich being in control is not new and i think that more or less they are in control of a lot It'll of aspects of life it'll be nice for me right? to think that they don't i mean so, I, i agree to that so the so the so so what stops a richest man in the world to become a crypto influencer that's it uh, Right. I, think, I think he's just his, testing the waters. His, yeah, his intention is not to be a crypto influencer. He's just playing around with the cryptocurrency he's that he finds pushing, interesting. Yeah, he's just playing. The, Elon yeah. Dogecoin is uh, the the logo in Dogecoin is Shiba Inu the dog. Yeah. And Elon Musk has a pet which is a Shiba Inu called Floki. And he might just have a liking towards the the breed of the dog because of which he's he's but playing around he with the cryptocurrency. Isn't he practicing some some sort of dump and pump, dump and pump, dump and pump? Isn't or, that like a crime? He's though. having fun though. Why is it a see? I this is where the problem is. Right? He is doing that with Tesla, and there is a regulator, and nobody is able to do anything about it. Okay, I I thought you said he did get fined, but he get fined like five million, right? And you're making a billion dollars. So what is five million? Fined in India, I people yeah. see get see my problem is with my country, boy. I am like I said a very patriotic Nagarik. I am looking out for my brother. Yeah. yeah. So even in India, money's get like eight crores ka fine, but they've probably made like twenty years ago. They made a deal and that was worth. India ka meko dark circuit pata karna tha. Pata hai. I have a friend. Actually, I have several friends in the crypto industry, not trading or doing anything, but they offer Bitcoin to cash. Matlab yeah. So how does that work? Raat ko saat baje phone bajna shuru hota hai, and after that it's just back to back calls. He has twenty five guys just attending his calls. and it'll be a 0.5% commission and you just have to transfer and the money will be given to you like it's such a solid trust system with him now that he is an institution in himself i, I, I think somewhere the hawalas are moving into changing their the modus operandi they've uh, they've added system, i think they've, they've added add, bitcoin yeah, in their in their transactions how does that work though like i understand now a couple of things i understand there is an exchange i understand there is a wallet and i understand there are a couple of other factors at play here but how who actually pays me the money if let's say i tomorrow uh, do end up minting or somehow getting a, one bitcoin which is worth how much now more than a crore it's uh, more no. than a one crore one bitcoin is 17 lakhs and if i go 21000 21000 yeah it's not if one crore i go crore. to my wallet and i yeah. say guys here's a bitcoin i'd like to how cash out now who somebody else wants to buy very it right? no who very is going to give me actually yeah, a crore let, in cash for yeah, somebody me, wants to buy the, my my friend me, will give it to you man i'm yeah. telling you that <laughs> now you understand it right yeah. if 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 you want to convert it through your bank you go to an exchange okay. the exchange will tell you give you an address to deposit your bitcoin you deposit it there uh-huh. and then the exchange will ask you your bank details you provide your bank details and the money is in the bank and these are exchanges that have physical Vault. stores world 
yeah. that's the worst Wo- example to give but no, okay no i'm i'm giving you an example because we've been speaking about it world wazirx coin dcx but uh, i thought they've all shifted overseas they they, 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 all, they all have indian entities they all have indian banking and they're all primarily catering to indian customers all indian customers until maybe 6 months ago were able to send money from their bank accounts upis i heard they got not, not only 6 months ago. not only upi it was neft it was rtgs it was all forms of payment they were able to deposit money into the corporate accounts of the exchanges okay. buy whatever they wanted and if they wanted to sell they were able to withdraw money back to their bank they accounts. operate in india for sure but are they also headquartered in india like if, but because i mean uh, and what kind of accountability is there about the funding part they they are not headquartered they in india yeah. they headquarter in so singapore they, they Again, tend, just out of curiosity what is stopping tomorrow So if Wazir X or any of these other companies was to go bust for this guy to get on a jet, go to the Caribbean and post a picture with another B A A grade actress saying I'm in love uh, and I'm dating so and so, like what is stopping these guys from doing that? Currently, there is no regulator for the crypto space. Uh, potentially, the the SEBI or some team in the SEBI could branch out okay. and establish a body just to oversee exchanges. Okay. However, there is none at the moment. So the government may. may may prosecute you for fraud for saying that you have you have portrayed something but delivered something else for customers uh, that's one of that's one of the possibilities how you can be prosecuted but there aren't any specific provisions for protecting consumer interest when it comes to buying or selling digital assets in india okay moment. so there are two more things that i had questions about uh, i'm sorry uh, one was the exaggerated valuations that these nfts because okay i'll i'll, I'll tell you where i'm coming from zomato listed at a certain price on the ipo so their valuation pre ipo was was x and post value i'm sorry post ipo once they actually got listed and when their cash flow statements became public it basically came down i think it was 900 and then became 600 uh paytm listed at 1800 so the biggest biggest ipo that india has ever seen even beating coal india in 2010s uh, their share price listing was 1800 once their cash flow systems and other things became public it basically half down So at the same time, these IPOs provided a lot of exits to investors who were exaggerating these valuations, like having a boardroom discussion coming out, chest thumping, lot of you know hugs, bro hugs here and there, going yeah, you know one billion, two billion, three billion, come on, you know like valuation. We are at the club, but when they come to the market, sab ki matlab line pe aa jate hain sab, theek hai. So I I want to kind of extrapolate this example and then I want you to apply it in your space or crypto space. Do you believe that there is a hype? A marketing absolutely ramp up, and this is not worth, you know, half the things they're saying. It there is, and Obviously especially with the newer and tokens, who where, would deny that? where there's been two years of activity where the token has been private, and people have been, or the the project has been building on the token, and rather they've they've not been building as much as marketing it, and then when a public sale tends to happen. it's not as much a possibility for public to buy into a very good project than the the original investors and the team just liquidating and sort of exit scamming the the public that's happened a lot which is again where you need to do your research you need to read the white paper you need to figure out is this token really delivering what they promise to deliver every token has a white paper they have a road map where they explain these are the things that we are going to build right. this is how we are going to disrupt the industry and this is what we intend to do If you haven't read the white paper, you possibly uh, saw videos or of a couple of setting yourself up for failure. Yeah, you you, sa- you saw uh, videos of a couple of influencers, or you saw that this token is now listed on an exchange, and that is uh, possibly reason enough for me to buy because the exchange has validated the fact that this token is worth listing. That's not having done enough research, okay. and then you tend to lose money on it. So white papers. Uh, what is the real world application? I want just three. I'm a simple guy. You give me three real world application of. anything at this point and i'll buy it honestly i'm so i'm so i'm so done but i want to hear i am sure there is a future and i want to believe deep down the skeptic in me wants to believe that there is a future for this i just want three examples of real world examples examples of crypto cryptography uh, or you know cryptocurrency or an nft which is not a flex i mean i won't consider a flex a real world example so just real three real i i g- i gave you that example considering what's currently happening i didn't say it's whether it is a real world example or not people are considering it as a flex or a digital identity or a digital avatar but yes a lot of people who are crypto native don't don't want to interact with people in the real world even if you get on a video video call they're going to be wearing a mask they'll wear a cap they'll wear anything to show you who they are in 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 reality because they just feel that they're more part of the digital identity and that's why they are now 
relating to nft so much because they are able to project their digital identity coming back to real world use cases because you of, must have read a bunch of white papers and i mean and obviously there is some sense there has yeah. to be some road map which yeah. these guys companies okay. lay down i think i uh, let's do it one by one yeah. i'll take the first use case for bitcoin very simply bitcoin is a payment layer where you can transfer value at very minimal cost at at a fraction of the time taken compared to banks and uh, a simple example would be uh, maybe say philippine workers uh, working in the us uh, getting their monthly pay and having to send it back to their home uh, hometown they will end up spending at least 7% of the of the transaction as banking charges or intermediary charges to send it back also it would take about 4 or 5 days if they were to use bitcoin they would be able to send it at a fraction of the cost it would the transaction would be processed max in what 20 minutes maybe an hour if you take six block yeah. confirmations mm -hmm. and uh, that's it i mean that is a real world so use case quick, quick, of quick transfers at a low cost and very very secure publicly verifiable that is that's what i have a difficulty with because i was reading some terms okay. and conditions once again and i came to the section called fees commissions royalties and other charges which terms and conditions are these these are of super dao Super We're talking DAO. about Bitcoin, though. Super DAO is okay, is but they're the same. I mean, gas fees is essentially the I mean, same. I mean, you will be paying gas fees in whatever in whatever yeah. ecosystem you're operating. Yeah. You will pay. You will pay a wallet charge. You will pay a gas fee, and that also depends on the on the value. So, if like there is a minting in action in that particular kind of coin, you will obviously have to pay a higher gas fee. Which sometimes and they have thresholds as well. So, Coinbase, for example, has thresholds of you're making transfers under you hundred USD. Between hundred and five hundred, before five hundred thousand. Coinbase, I, Coinbase so, again so is a centralized entity. Exchanges as an example, because but how else will I transfer? You, you don't need transfer. You, you, you don't, don't need, need exchange exchanges. To but I will still pay gas fee. Yeah, yeah, but then it's not the same that an exchange would charge you. Of course, but like at the same time, what is there to say that it will be less than seven percent? It will be at that particular moment. बहुत भीड़ तो ज़्यादा लगेगा, कम है तो सस्ता लगेगा. Fair enough, right? Uh, so the thing is that. Having said that, let's move on to example number two. Uh, I want to hear another real world application about okay. this. I I work with a company called Arcana Network, and what what they are building or what we are building is uh, data uh, storage layers, making them decentralized. Right. So today, uh, most of your internet websites run on two or three servers: AWS, uh, Microsoft, Microsoft Azure, yeah. uh, or some other cloud, right? Google yeah. Cloud or something. So so what if you can actually Uh, so AWS goes down. A lot of websites go down. What if you can actually create storage systems that are distributed across the world, and uh, they are used to access the content that you need in a more cryptographically or encrypted way, right? And there is no single point of failure over there. So and this is happening right now. Yeah. People are building right now. There People is are building coin. right now. No, Filecoin is uh, a good example. Storage. IPFS is a good example. Storage. IP isn't Storage. IPFS isn't Finally, IPFS. Finally, like I'm Storage. getting a lot of anxiety with all these loopholes, etc. I want to know, like, what's the vision to maybe feel a little better? Yeah, Do give us some like, feel good guys. Get, like, what's the future of? I see. Make I think in good. the words of in the words of Satoshi Nakamoto, if we cannot convince you, if you are not convinced by now, there is no way that we are going to. Yes. Convince, right. <laughs> so. and the and it's it's the bias is real and the reason is because we've grown into ecosystems where we've learned to trust things trust people trust governments trust our elders all of those things so it's fundamentally very hard to wrap your hand head around the fact that we have to now distrust very distrust everything else and verify things that are written on a computer Error. in a code right so it takes a lot of time to change that attitude it took us a lot of time to change that attitude as well right anybody of us probably got into bitcoin first to just because somebody else made money so we also got into it right and then when you start putting efforts into learning that and you move on and you understand the other technologies that's when you realize the importance of you know privacy and decentralization now think about what happened with a news i don't want to name them but a news organization which is towards the left side right so they um uh, the government essentially asked a payment processor to give information of all the people who have donated to this news organization i am the lawyer for that organization I was great so <laughs> so that's a violation of your privacy the government has the rights to ask this information because they want because they have put it in the terms and conditions you know you are a citizen and you have signed those terms and conditions as no, uh, uh, the moment you have the passport or you are born here if we can do something 
to give you that privacy back and with while we are building that there's a lot of scams that are going to come up there are there's a lot of you know grifters who are going to take the opportunity and try to you know take money out of it but it's a bet to take because at the end of the day if it is successful you would have changed the way the world works the way people think the way governments and democracies work right and to me it's the risk that i'm willing to take yeah right? i that's think a very promising just, one just to add i was in fact going to ask you that what do you think the indian government should uh, in government can do better in terms of dealing with crypto the taxation the regulation every anything like that i think they've it's it's is a good thing they've come out with tax laws it's uh, although all the 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 tax laws they've come out with aren't ideal who likes tax like it's <laughs> yeah, not man, like like the tax is exist irrespective of crypto right 31st july is the last day to I file mean, i tax think tax all of it hinges on the hinges <laughs> on the <laughs> fact that governments <laughs> think that they can somehow stop the crypto world from in, uh, tomorrow if my samosa wala is in, uh, taking bitcoins i am sure as hell transferring him bitcoin and i don't care if i have if i have to like think that the government will come after me like i won't worry about 30% tax like ha tu mere se apne wallet mein le de do samosa baat khatam but when that kind of an ecosystem is fully there i think it's it's up to you crypto makes it possible for you to choose how private you want to be there yeah. are some currencies which are so much more private than bitcoin as well where yeah. where the information is obfuscated on chain so that it's called monero uh, monero yeah yeah right it's it's still a little technical to use how to be there's a public and a private chain on monero as well it's but easy. but i think if 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 you are making significant amount of money and this is where i come to talk from experience because i've seen people who have made money in crypto since 2013 they have made life changing gains they have made gener- generational wealth now they want to come back into the economy they want to pay their taxes and actually be able to enjoy their lifestyle or sustain whatever bitcoin is not so pervasive at the moment that you can actually go and buy a car or a house or anything else that you want to buy to improve your lifestyle there in- is this one broker in uh, gurgaon <laughs> who has started accepting bitcoin for uh, properties nice and he's like aap do to yaar <laughs> Here's <laughs> <laughs> my wallet ID. First transfer. <laughs> so, I, please do your KYC. All of these, <laughs> all of all of these cases are. See, India is not a country where you need that currency use case. Okay, we have we have yeah. we are fundamentally very good with our our you know payment system. And UPI is great. Yeah, UPI is amazing. Yeah, right? it's good. But at the same point of time, one of the biggest uh, industries in the country where wealth is that is real estate. like there is one the value which is on paper which is a circle rate and then there is that black market which is probably twice the size of matlab mera ghaziabad mein ghar hai agar main aaj bechne jaunga to uski registry hogi 20 lakh rupaye ki aur agar 60 lakh se kam ke maine bech diya to ghar wale jaan se maar denge i and i think that that part of the you know ecosystem will take some time to you know for the government to understand and how to regulate it and and also all the governments not just this government any government yeah. is aware of how much they are losing in revenue because of these black markets they are f- f- uh, fundamentally aware of I it i would rather say that these but, black markets are created because of the government's stringent yeah. reg- regulations but they have to let them be there yeah the government knows what kind of cash is peddled every day in chandni chowk and karol bag right yeah. it's it's impossible there are the hawalas there, there are angadia services in gujarat that are openly doing chandni chowk right? is now using bitcoin as a form of exchange pehle wahan pe jo system hota tha ki aap jaate the government is concerned because cash they could still you know pay Demon- some you know informers yeah. and they can get a, the idea you move to a digital cash pehle hawala you, system i remember yeah. used to be the scene where a guy will take a 10 rupee note or a 100 rupee note It's and he will show it thing. to the yeah. shopkeeper he'll verify ki acha ye wahi number hai jo maine bola tha and then like it get it gets verified ki ha ye wahi payment hai and It's cryptocurrency is in a way sort of similar because it comes with that exact hash jo chandni chowk mein aaj se shayad 50 saal pehle shopkeeper dekhta tha ki bhai not not to tere wallet mein aa jayega bhai tere ko cash collect hi nahi karna not only the two of you can see it if somebody else also has your wallet address from 50 days ago he can also just one fine day wake up and see let me see what nemish is up to these days open his wallet address on the explorer and see what kind of transactions nemish has done so in a way it's public you can verify it you can do everything but to some extent it it lends you the privacy that you need however again coming back to the point of being compliant with laws here 
crypto is not so prevalent or it's not a medium of exchange at the moment that el salvador has accepted el salvador is also struggling they the government back wallet they are they have linked it to the government back wallet they don't allow it to directly take so they say you give it in the wallet we will issue you one and you exchange no no they can do they can you, do you can you can accept from outside sources as well yeah. but, but they are very bullish on, on on bitcoin they were also starting some some kind of bond where certain proceeds would be invested in bitcoin and a certain amount of volcanic energy would be used to mine bitcoin because i think it's going to take a while we're we giving it very short period of time it's not even been a year goes. since they started these plans okay. give them at least 4 5 years and i think we should be able to see some progress okay. but yeah coming back you the way the current system works the current economy works you need to have money in the bank to 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 make your purchases or to pay your taxes the government doesn't accept crypt, uh, crypto as tax right uh, in in couple of states in the us at some stage the state governments decided we'll accept uh, bitcoin as crypto um, as, as crypto tax sorry now when the when the regulations have come out in in these new tds rules the government has said any exchange which deducts tds within 24 hours they need to convert that crypto into inr because the government exactly doesn't want midnight. the Every government day. doesn't want exposure to crypto in terms of the taxes that they have collected for more than 24 hours they are not comfortable with it selective haircut hai na ki har transaction tumhe chahiye yeah. loss hai to meko kuch nahi lena dena profit hai to it's khach. i personally think it's a very smart move the government it's a smart move it's but it's a disabling it's, move at the same point yeah. yeah that's yeah. what they wanted right it's smart <laughs> but that's disabling what, I think that's what they wanted. They wanted to. I think India, the, Indian the government is mindfully trading. trying to become the black market of the world, world cryptocurrency in 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 a certain manner. If you look at the number of people who have moved out in the last six months, who are unhappy with the regulations or the lack of regulations, but tax regulations here, who are not willing to spend any more time in a in a market where there is no clarity of when regulations are going to come out, when the tax laws are going to be relaxed. it's it's huge <laughs> the number of crypto natives who are moving out it's unbelievable along with that again we 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 are just going to miss the bus as we did in back in 2000 when with the internet boom and it's unfortunate we but we miss the bus so i would like to say we are very much on the bus dude we are service providers we build and, and nothing we, here and, and yeah, we because it's cheap with semiconductor with taiwan and they've been doing it no but we've no, also no, been we, also we put it semiconductor we've it's also been bpos bunker we've also been bpos no in the softwares we we only provide services we've done the second degree third degree jobs we should be building things which we are not doing and uh, the startup ecosystem sort of brought us to the point where we started building great products out of here zoho uh, is one of them zerodai is one of them without funding they've built these products but uh, that wasn't the ecosystem when the entire world was building things and we were just giving them back end services if you look at the pace of development overseas with the kind of projects that are coming out not even a fraction of those definitely we can be more here. innovative and let's we hope that tomorrow is an innovative india tomorrow is in india that not only just copies or tries to think that we are emulating some innovation we are but we are the harbingers of tesla and neuralink and probably way more promising things in the future yeah. there was a fun podcast sorry but i think we're a bit short of time right so in a sh- short crisp do you have anything to say about the crypto law the crypto law i mean like a 30 second thing. quick rap <laughs> like like <laughs> like i There is a lot of hetero heteronormative heteroness nature of the laws itself. So you have different jurisdictions doing their own thing. Uh, it's going to take some time before this this comes up. But I do see a use case scenario for it in the near future. They will be forced to do it. It's not like they will want to, but it's things will come to a situation where they will be forced to come out with laws. Maybe in the next four five years, definitely we'll see a lot more action from the yeah. RBI and from the Ministry of Finance. Let's aim to that. So all right. So crypto currency in India it's a confusing situation we are growing at a speed that we can't control at this point of time taxation Indian government has banned it first then after that the supreme court said that we can't ban it because it in some way impinges upon your freedom and thereafter the taxation regime came under the finance bill of 2022 yeah in which there was a 30% capital gains uh, cap, 30% capital gains tax imposed on every profit you make transaction wise it's not even on your daily tra- daily profit or your monthly profit but it's a matter of if you make a profit out of any transaction hey we're here to collect our 
हम आपको क्या देंगे बदले में हाँ सड़के देंगे दैट डजेंट रियली गिव एनी थिंग टू द क्रिप्टो करेंसी इंडस्ट्री एंड नाइदर डज इट लुक वेल ऑन द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट डज निर्मला सीतारामन नो अबाउट क्रिप्टो करेंसी एंड हाउ इट वर्क एंड हाउ डिफरेंट एक्सचेंजेस वर्क आई एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम थिंक दैट दे जस्ट ट्राइंग टू स्ट्रग ऑफ द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू अंडरस्टैंड इट एंड रादर मूविंग टू अ प्लेस वेयर दे जस्ट फोकसिंग ऑन वन थिंग दैट्स कॉल्ड मनी Uh, इससे ज़्यादा बोलेंगे तो जेल जाने के चांसेस हैं सो लेट्स कंक्लूड टुडेज एपिसोड ऑफ अर्जर्न थैंक यू सो मच शिवांकर फॉर द करण थापर दैट वी सॉ इन यू टुडे आई थिंक द पॉडकास्ट वाज अ मिक्स ऑफ जो रोगन दोस्त कास्ट एंड करण थापर लाइक मीटिंग इच अदर एंड डूइंग इट नेमेश थैंक यू सो मच फॉर गिविंग अस द इनसाइट फ्रॉम इन द क्रिप्टो इंडस्ट्री एंड ऑन द टैक्स साइड वी हैड अनुष आई थिंक इट वॉज अ फन पॉडकास्ट विद दैट वील रैप अप टू डे शूट लेट्स कॉल इट अर्जर्न